Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, welcome to Friday Night Lights, Lockhart, Texas style. We're here at Bernie High School where Bernie Champion Chargers are playing your Lockhart Lions. The Bernie Champion Chargers come in at 2-3 and three overall. They're 0-2 in district play in Class 5A District 14 Division 2. Your Lockhart Lions are 3-2 and two overall, 1-1 one one in Class 5A District 14 Division 2. And as you know, uh, our head coach, Brian Herman, runs the famous slot T, one of the only teams in the state that does that. And then on the other side, head coach Keith Kaiser runs the show there. So basically, we'll start off with who we have on the team tonight. And hang on just a minute as I'm trying to get my daughter on here because today <laughs> is a birthday and we're trying to get her to hear this. So anyways... Back to who's with us. First of all, QA, we've never had this guy before. The Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, ex Lockhart guy. Anyways, Randy Fry, thanks for being with us tonight. We're glad to have you, as always, my friend. Without this young lady, a senior in high school here, McKelty Altier. McKelty, thank you very much for what you do because we would never have a show without this amazing person that last Friday yes. night. Yeah put the scoreboard together because we didn't have pictures for the scoreboard and this genius did it on her own because if it had been up to me we'd have had to draw it in crayon and that's what we'd have had on my right beside me is the sarge emilio juarez he is our color commentator he comes with the stats he has all the knowledge of high school football he'll give scores for uh, who's winning the district play and things of that nature and then myself, Scott Smith, play-by-play. Play. And this is the crew that you have pretty much every Friday night, and sometimes including Randy Fry, because we've had him probably 60% of the games this year. So we're glad to have the team together. We always have a good game when we have those going on. But tonight is a huge matchup as we're playing the champion Chargers where they're 0-2 in district play. I don't know if this school has seen 0-2 in district play in like 80 to 90 years. And now that we're facing a team that's 0-2 and, and they're going to be hungry for a win at their home field and they have a great quarterback that runs the show for them. On our side, we also we have the dynamic duo and they call it the three-headed monster if you add Aldania to the, the equation. And that's who we have going on. Before we get to that, though, I'm before I hand it off to Emilio, is I'm going to give a shout out to someone who is one of the loves of my life and is literally a quarter of a century years old. My daughter Mackenzie Shea Smith is 25. Wanted to wish her happy birthday all the way in Denver, Colorado, where it's snowing and in the 30s over there so i'm glad i'm in texas while she's in denver colorado freezing to death but honey i just wanted to say happy birthday i wish you well and i sure miss seeing you guys and don't you know rub it in but just remind uh nate the great there that the kansas city chiefs actually beat the denver broncos not that we're <laughs> rubbing that in or anything with him and then i want to also give a shout out to my lovely wife vanessa wish you were here so now, I'll give it to the guy who knows it all about all football, the Sarge. What do you got for me, Sarge? All right, and welcome to the Law the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show as uh, we get ready for a, a very crucial district game matchup between the Lockhart Lions and the Bernie Champion Chargers. As Scott mentioned, the Bernie Champion comes into tonight's game 0-2. And uh, talking with Coach Harmon before we had the interview that, you know, Bernie Champion is – the best 0 and 2 team in district that's probably in the state of Texas. You know, they they've played some tough competition. They lost a close one to Tyvee to start their district season. And then last week they lose to uh, uh Medina Valley who ends up scoring two touchdowns in the last uh, 3 4 minutes of that contest. You know, so they're coming in and they're hungry for the first district win because tonight it's a crucial game before two team these two teams. Lockhart gets a win tonight. They could pretty much write themselves into the into the postseason if they finish two and two the rest of the way. Bernie Champion puts themselves back into the playoff picture with a win tonight. You know, Lockhart still plays a plays a big part inside the uh, playoff picture, even if they lose tonight. But you know, Coach Herman wants to come out and uh, 
and uh, impose their will and come out with a victory tonight. And uh, let me go and give you the gist district games for the Meitler Storage uh, game break. Um, at San Antonio Memorial, the Memorial Minutemen host Alamo Heights. At Uvalde, the U Uvalde Coyotes host Tyvee Antlers. And here at Bernie Champion, it is Lockhart Lions visiting Charger Country. And last night, in the only action for District 14 5A, Medina Valley defeated Kennedy Rockets in San Antonio 42 to 7. So, with that, you know, we got uh, a couple of interviews that we want to go and take care of right now. And uh, I got the uh, Christ Market Coach's Corner with Coach Brian Herman. Just as uh, we were down, downstairs on the field just a while ago to speak with him. And uh, let me get the connection real quick. Ugh. And uh, we'll get to that, com that interview right now. And once again, this is the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And this is here, your Christ Market Coach's Corner with uh, Coach Brian Herman, head coach of the Lockhart Lions. Go Coach! All right, welcome to tonight's uh, Christ Market Coach's Corner. This is Emilio Sarge Waters. I'm here with head coach Brian Herman. How are you doing, coach? I'm great. All right, coach. Well, we had a bye week, but before then, uh, Lockhart... You know, soundly beat uh, Memorial team from San Antonio, 41 to nothing. Talk about that game and how pleased you were that they were able to control the line of scrimmage as opposed to what they weren't able to do the week before that against Medina Valley. Well, actually, that first first half, I was a little frustrated because I didn't think we were as sharp as we needed to be. Uh, we came back in the second half and, and really got focused and dialed in. I was really proud of the defensive effort, you know, a shutout. We've actually had two shutouts now on the season. Uh, even though the, the scores don't show it, that first ball game against Travis was a shutout. That was a, a fumble return for a touchdown against our offense. So two shutouts for our defense. Our defense is playing great. I think we've allowed fewer points uh, on the season than any team in our district. So I'm really proud of the way our defense is playing. Definitely, and you know, I, I think uh, I don't think uh, Memorial even got past the uh, the line. I think 27 yard line the entire game. So it was a great uh, defensive output that we had two weeks ago. All right, now we come across to the bye week. What things did you work in, work out the last two weeks to prepare the Lions for uh, uh, what's going to be a tough test tonight with uh, Bernie Champion? Actually, we started the week of Memorial. Memorial had some similar uh, defensive schemes to what Bernie Champion does to us defensively. So we were able to start uh, some extra things that week of Memorial. So we're on week three of polishing some things that haven't been seen yet. So we're, we're excited to, to roll some new stuff out tonight. Uh, the kids are excited about it. And uh, it, you, you're going to see some things you probably haven't seen. And it's, it, we're, we're all very excited. Uh, Bernie's ex <laughs> very, very good. Uh, you know, we, obviously we haven't beaten them since 2012. And that was two different coaching staffs, you know, a different staff for Bernie Champion, a different staff for Lockhart. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's time. It's been a, a long haul for the last five years. Uh, Bernie Champion's very, very good. Their record is not really indicative of how well they're playing. Uh, they've played some 6As, and then they've had close losses to Kerrville Tyvee and to Medina Valley. So uh, they're a lot better than their record indicates, uh, but we're hoping that some of the new stuff we have in place will be something they're not prepared for. I know we talked about for the Medina Valley game that it was an important, important for the Lions to come out with a victory in that game. You know, of course, Lockhart took the loss in that one and won against Memorial, but how big is this game? for Lockhart Lions to come out with a victory tonight. Well, and if you go back and look at, you know, we lost a close one to Medina Valley. You know, it was basically essentially a tie ball game minus the extra points. Uh, and then Medina Valley beat Bernie Champion by one point. So uh, it just shows you that depending on how you play each night, it's it's anybody's ball game. So this game's extremely important. We have five ball games left in district play. Um, and we've got to win the majority of them to qualify for the playoffs. So uh, there's no more important game than this one tonight. And I'll say the same thing next week and the same thing the next week because every, every Friday night is important if we want to make it to the playoffs. All right. Now talk about some uh, key players that uh, you all keyed on for the Bernie Champion Chargers for tonight's contest. Well, they're out there warming up right now. So that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. No, they're, um, they're dangerous all over the place. I mean, if you when they line up, you're going to see their huddle and our huddle, and you're going to you're going to see the difference in the size and uh, just the makeup of the, their programming. Look how tall these guys are. They, we're, we're definitely outmatched size and and uh, size and height and weight, um, and in some cases some cases speed. Their number two is faster than anybody I've seen uh, on a Friday night in a long, long time. 
uh, I would equate him to a, a Jordan Shipley back when, when he was at Burnett years and years and years ago. Everybody knows who Jordan Shipley is, but, but he's playing quarterback now. Last year he was a safety and a slot receiver, and now they moved him to quarterback. So he's scary because not only can he throw the ball, but when the play breaks down, he can make anything happen. So number two on offense is, is our biggest concern. They've got great tall receivers, all 6'3 type receivers. So we're, we're you know at somewhat of a disadvantage. Now luckily having Adam Romero and Cortland Zambrano and Devin Clark, we, we added some length to our, our defense, but but we are at a mismatch in a lot of different places. Yes. On the way up here, Scott and I were talking about the physicality so far the Lockhart defense has provided. They're not just making tackles, but they're gang tackling, and they're making their tackles. I mean, you could practically hear them all the way up to the booth. And also with the speed of the defense, do you think that this is the type of defense that Bernie hasn't seen in the last few years? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, they've played a couple six A's, so they, you know, they faced some really talented programs uh, that have given them some fits too. Um, really, the key going back to what you say is the game tackling. We've got to get a, a bunch of guys to the ball because uh, they are bigger than we are, so we're not going to be able to make solo tackles every time. Uh, you know, Caleb Jennings and, and Alex Thompson. Alex Thompson have done an excellent job of, of making those type of plays, but these guys are bigger and stronger than some of the ones they've been tackling. So uh, the key is game tackling and trying to trying to get turnovers whenever possible. All right. Now, as for the offense, what is the what is the keys that y'all are focusing on to come out with a victory tonight? Well, you know, they they line up in a unique defense, or at least they have over the last five years. We anticipate them to line up the same because it's worked. Uh, they go four down linemen, five linebackers, and two safeties. It feels like they've got 15 linebackers out there because they're all about the same size. Um, and like I said, they go four, five, two. Um, but those two safeties play like linebackers, and those five linebackers, are they fly to the football. Their four D linemen are, are big, big D linemen, but not 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 wide D linemen. They're athletic and fast, just like linebackers. So when I say it feels like there's 15 linebackers out there, it's just because they're all crowding the line of scrimmage. So the key for us is trying to figure out how to get the ball away from those guys, uh, maybe get on the edge a little bit, you know, maybe throw the ball here and there uh, just to loosen them up and then and then maybe come back with a trap or something where Daquan can get loose. So pretty much the the, the battle of this game is going gonna, is gonna to come down to whose offensive line, if the Lions offensive line is going to be able to push around a defensive line. It, it is, and, and it, we're outnumbered uh, with, with a 4-5, with a nine-man front. You know, we're outnumbered. You know, we have seven across, but uh, we're, we're going to try to split Cortland Zambrano out a little bit and make him a little more involved in the offense and, like I said, try to do something that maybe they're not used to. This, this, is, this is definitely the night to do all that because, I mean, in my opinion, this is, this is a must-win for the Lions. So, you know, and going forward, every game is a must-win, but this one really sets the tone for the remainder of the year as we got Alamo Heights coming into town as well as Tyvee mixed in with the uh, Kennedy Rockets and uh, Uvalde to close out the season. So, all right, Coach, I want to wish you the best of luck tonight, and uh, let's, let's bring that W home. Let's shock these Chargers and turn out their lights. We need to. We need to. Go Lions. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, thank you once again. And uh, this was uh, Christ Market, Coach's Corner. I'm Emilio Sarge Waters, and you just listened to Coach Brian Herman, head coach of Lockhart Lions. And we will take a quick break and be right back to you for the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. All right, that right there was your first Lockhart National Bank uh, pregame show brought uh, w with the uh, Christ Market coach's corner with uh, coach brian herman of the lockhart lions and he had a lot of good things to say and knows that this team the the bernie chamber chargers are hungry for victory it is homecoming night for the chargers as well too so this is a lion's second game in a row where they've gone on the road and playing a homecoming homecoming game so i'll turn it over to scott as scott had some uh, player interviews down there at the bottom while the while the lions were warming up all right, well, uh, we're going to try to get every single guy on the roster in an interview situation because they, they're guys. They only talk for about a minute anyways, no matter how long the question is. But the first guy we had tonight, this guy doesn't just play football. He is also a good uh, goalkeeper in soccer. And we're going to – we talked to Spencer Nelson, who's a defensive lineman and tied in for your Lockhart Lions. And this is what senior Spencer Nelson had to say about tonight's game. 
This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with senior Spencer Nelson. He's a defensive lineman. He's also a tight end. Spencer, how has your senior season gone so far for you? It's going a lot better than I expected. Uh, we're doing well, working hard, doing everything we're supposed to do, and I'm just ready for the, the preseason. All right. Now, the second question, um, last year for football, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? For the remainder of the season, uh, I just want us to work hard and work as a team. And then if we do that, easily we'll practice on Thanksgiving and then go to playoffs and hopefully go farther than we have before. That is awesome. And my last question is the always easy one. Who would you like to give a shout out to? Easily my parents. Um, they come every Friday and they support me. And anything I do, they're always there for me. All right. Well, that was Spencer Nelson. He's a, our senior defensive lineman and tied in. Spencer, good luck tonight. Thank you, sir. All right, well, that was Spencer Nelson. As I said, we got about a minute out of Spencer, and, and he was the talkative one. And uh, we'll move on now to I tried to catch him to the last game we played because the game before he was the defensive player of the game, and I couldn't catch up with him. I couldn't find him, so I got him tonight. And two games ago, he was our defensive player of the game, and that is Luis Torres. And this is what he had to say about tonight's game. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports to Vibe Magazine. I'm here with senior linebacker Luis Torres. Two games ago, he was defensive player of the game. Tried to find him the last game for an interview, and I couldn't find him, so we're going to get him today. So, Luis, you've had a good season this year. You've been all over the place. Uh, you've done a great job um, making a name for yourself. How has your senior season gone in your eyes? Uh, I would say it's been pretty good. I mean, competition everywhere. It's been I mean, we're all just having fun. That's that's the, the real thing about here. Having fun, play hard, do everything you can. Awesome. My second question, again, senior year, your last two raw here at Lockhart, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? I say make it to the playoffs. That's what we want. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're Very good. And the last one, this is the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? I would say I want to give a shout out to my team. They give love and appreciation and they help me out every time. So. Uh, all right, well, that's senior linebacker, Luis Torres, and I appreciate your time. Good luck tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, appreciate it. All right, that was Luis Torres, and I lied. He actually was the talker with a minute and 11 seconds there, so that there you have that. Now we're going to go to another senior. This is what David Garcia, defensive back and running back for the football team, had to say. <laughs> This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports to Vibe Magazine. I'm here with David Garcia, who's a defensive back and a running back. And as I said, he's a senior. David, this senior year, how's it gone for you? So far, senior season has gone great. We're playing good as a team, and we continue to keep going on and make playoffs. All right. And then that kind of goes into my next question. What are your goals personally for the remainder of this year? Beat every team and go to playoffs. Those are great answers. My last one's the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? My team, they're the best there is, and my dad, DJ Falco Garcia. Very good. Well, I appreciate your time. I wish you good luck, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, and that was David Garcia, and that may be the record for the shortest interview we've had thus far, but he's straight to the point. He doesn't mess around. He tells you what he thinks. And now for our, for our junior of the night, our underclassman, is Caleb Jennings, who has a big task tonight in covering those wide receivers. Here's what Caleb had to say. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine, and I'm here with junior Caleb Jennings, defensive back. And Caleb, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're leading the team in interceptions this year. If you're not, you're darn close, but you had a great game the last time we played. So your junior year, you're just a junior. What are your, what, how's your junior year gone for you? It's gone like I didn't, I didn't expect it to go this way at all. Like I've just been working so hard to do what I've been doing so far in that. I hope that just like as I progress more, I get better and better and get looked at sooner. That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. So now, again, just being a junior, we know you got another year coming back. We also know you're a basketball star. So here's the question now: Is with your junior year, what are your goals for the rest of the season? Just to strive and do harder, work harder, and do it in the classroom and on the field, and just show that I'm uh, I can be trusted on the field and in the classroom with my coaches and my and my my fellow athletes. That may be the best answer I think I've had all year. That was a good answer. Now the last one, this one's the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? Oh, my dad, Lex, for just, uh, just helping me become the person I am and that he just helps me through everything I am and make me the person I am today. 
All right, well, that was Junior, Caleb Jennings, defensive back, and he's going to have a big chore tonight, Start stopping one of their great players. Caleb, you have a great game, and thank you for the interview. Thank you. All right, and that was Caleb Jennings, and to be quite honest, I mean, I know the kid just because he's in my son's class, but that was some pretty good interviews there. I mean, all of them did well, but Caleb really stood up and uh, – and <coughs> gave some insight i've never had anybody give that kind of insight into an interview before uh before i hand it back off to emilio i want it rudy cadillo my eyes in the sky when it comes to volleyball when i can't be there uh our freshman team won two to nothing tonight so the freshmen had no problem in their matches and i'm wa i'm also reading through what i just got sent here let's see the jv won the first set 25 to 18 and they won the second set 25 to 15 so now it's time for the varsity and I will stop it right there, as I'm not going to read the whole thing. But anyways, <laughs> as we are ready to roll, and again, I cannot thank Rudy Cadillo enough because he is the guy that knows everything about every game when I'm not around. And it's good to have people like him that let me know what's going on so I can let you folks know what's going on. So now we'll go back to Emilio and his thoughts on the game. We're about 8 minutes, 50 seconds away from this uh, kickoff. We're still going through the homecoming process. So, Emilio, take it over. Yes, definitely. Before I continue on, I want to give a shout-out for uh, Jaden Garcia from her mother. And uh, she wants to know that she enjoys listening to Lockhart Line football and supporting the team. And she also loves to see her her daughter as a cheerleader, a varsity cheerleader at that too. So, so big shout out right there. And uh, you know, Lockhart comes into tonight's contest at three and two and one and one in district play, as Scott Scott Smith uh, said. And those three victories that Lockhart has had, they've outscored their opponents uh, one sixty six to eighty one. You know, and and those three losses. You know, in the three wins, Lockhart has scored 90 points in the three wins that they've had. In the two wins that they've had, they've lost by a combined total of five points. So both those games that they lost, they've been in the contest. It was just, you know, of course, Taylor had that late comeback. And then uh, Medina Valley, we had the block, uh, the, the two-point run uh, conversion on the block punt field goal and then the missed field goal at the end of the game. As for uh, Bernie Champion, they come in tonight's contest two and three, zero and two in district play, as we mentioned, and you know they've outscored their opponents one fifty six to one oh seven, while Lockhart outscored their opponents one sixty six to eighty one. So if you round that all up, you know Lockhart Lions average thirty three point two points per game, while Bernie Champion averages thirty one point two. Now defensively, it's a little bit different different story. Lockhart has has had some defensive success. And they've only allowed 16.2 points allowed per game, while Bernie Champion sits at 21.4. So it's like I talked to Coach Herman, it's really going to come down in this ball game to that front line, the offense and the defensive line. You know, as Coach Herman said, they, they line up in a 5-4-2 in a uh, defense. So And they got seven men that are stretched across. But as we all heard in the, the, co the Christ Market Coaches Corner, there's going to be some little surprises here and there that, you know, things that we have not seen in the prior five games that we're going to be seeing tonight. So maybe that's going to make a difference. Lockhart is is a scrappy team this year. They are very physical, like I told, uh, like I mentioned to Coach Herman. They're very physical. They're very quick. This is going to be a different defense than what Bernie Champion has seen from the Lockhart Lions in the past few years. So it's going to be exciting to see who comes out on top tonight because tonight – it's going to make the difference to where who, who's going to have the easier path to the playoffs. Well, our bodyguard just showed back up. Who's this guy standing behind us? Uh, that's uh, Alexander the Great Water. That's my youngest son. And uh, before tonight, probably about halftime, he'll come up on, we'll get him with the headset on and uh, run him through the ringer like we ran Gunner through the ringer. So Hey, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> By gosh, we could do that. Mm. Now, you, this is your little – instrument here and i'm pretty inept when it comes to this stuff yes. why don't you scroll through there and give shout outs to people you see all right i want to get that what we're doing right now for the first time is we're, we want to bring the pregame show live to you i mean even if you're here at the game if you're at home or if you're in the car on the way to the game you know why not see what's going on here you know we'll take it all the way up maybe about the last 
uh, two, three minutes before kickoff time. But we'll try and stay on here long enough and hopefully get you get the camera turned around so you can see your Lions coming into the field. But this is something new that uh, we want to try and work out to bring you fans to the stadium with us, whether you're here or where you're out of town or wherever you're at, you can come visit us. I want to give a shout-out to Sonia Gonzalez, Bert Trejo, Clyde Wright, Wright uh, Juan Mendoza, Jaden Garcia, Angela Meitler, for a uh, Meitler storage uh, game break. Awesome. So John Castillo, Big John Castillo, Sofia Zapata, Sosa, Roland Gerard, the father of uh, Bailey Gerard. Yep. He was a great outstanding defensive That's player. That's my next door neighbor. <laughs> Richard Moya, who is, uh, who's the father of Richard Moya Jr., who caught right. that diving catch. Uh, Roberta Smith. I know her. Uh, Esther Faye Martinez. And a whole list of y'all that, you know, tuning in to watch tonight's uh, pre first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. So there's a little something that we want to try and give back to you fans. That way, bring you to the stadium, whether you're here or not, or where you're at home. So it's going to be an exciting night. Lockhart Lions, Bernie Champion, it's, it's, it's going to be who's hungrier tonight is going to determine the outcome of tonight's ball game. It looks like we're getting ready to have American Idol tryouts All here. Right. <laughs> 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 so it, it's it, it's funny because it was Coach Curry's uh, daughters that were at the game the other night singing into the mic. So now we're gonna get these little girls down here. There we go. There they are. They're on TV now. There, everybody there can we see go. Now. Let's there play. They're go. Charger fans, but Friday Night Lights. Everybody's a fan for Texas high school football. There you go. All right. So As you see, you got your lines sitting right there at the edge of the the tunnel, getting ready to come out. And this is always an exciting sight to see. And you can feel the goosebumps coming, you know, rolling oh, yeah. up your arms as they run out. Only in Texas football. As we let the Lions come out, of course, the cheerleaders and the uh, Lionettes following them. And you got champion Chargers, the Bernie champion out here, ready to come out their tunnel. And, of course, we'll have the, the, the national anthem, and we'll try and have that for you here. But as soon as the national anthem is over, we'll be cutting out. And we can't show no video on Friday night because it's against UIL rules. But you can still... Click on the link that we have right there on the Lion Country Broadcast Network page and listen to us live as Scott Smith brings you the play-by-play -play and myself, the Sarge, gives you the color commentary and McKelty Altier over here gives, does the producing for our game tonight. So as they get lined up, let me go ahead and uh, set it up so we could have you join us as a, play, as a Bernie Champion Chargers band plays the national anthem for tonight's contest. And like I said, after that, we'll be cutting out. And then you could click on the link and listen to us as we go live. Is there a lot? <laughs> I like the music. Yeah. <laughs> Get my old man glasses on. Okay, and here we go. We'll go ahead and turn down our mics and turn up the crowd mic and listen to the national anthem. champion Air Force Junior ROTC color guard tonight is being represented by the American flag guard, Cadet Captain Dylan Brownlee. 
American flag bearer, Cadet Major Ryan Serber. Texas flag bearer, Cadet Second Lieutenant Joseph Tompkins. And Texas flag guard, Cadet Staff Sergeant Ryan Myers. All right, well, we're back. The clock strikes zero. We're getting ready to start us some football here. And just real quick, give a shout-out because they're always on here. Get it. I, we called her name off earlier, Roberta and Clarence Smith. We're glad to have you on with us as you are always there. And uh, just real quickly, uh, how we got where we're at. Bernie Champion lost to Stevens 21-7. to They beat Remor uh, Veterans Memorial 38-21. They beat uh, MacArthur 50 to nothing. They lost to Tyvee 25 to 32, and they beat Medina, or they lost to Medina Valley 35 34. On the other side, with Lockhart, how we got here on our side, we beat Travis 54 to 7. We lost to Taylor 29 to 30. We beat Burnett 23 21. We lost to Medina Valley 19 to 23, and we beat San Antonio Memorial 41 to nothing. So that's kind of where we stand, and um, it's fairly quiet out there, Mila. Are we missing something? Uh, no, I think they went silent so the, until the colors gets off the field. So I got you. I but, uh, got you. We're going to have to go and cut out, cut out the Facebook Live now, though. But uh, be sure to click on the link that's on this same Facebook page and listen to this game live as McKelty Altier does the producing. There she is. <laughs> Scott Smith does the play-by-play. -play, and myself, the Sarge, follows up with color commentary. So click that link. And get ready to hear some Lockhart Lions football live tonight here at Bernie ISD Stadium as your Lockhart Lions take on the Bernie Champion Chargers. And the Sarge is out. All right, so it looks like they're getting the captains out there ready to go. As I said earlier, Spencer Nelson, he is one of the captains for the team, and he was interviewed tonight. Daquan Ellison is there. Sosa is there. I believe... Number f Darius Spruill is out there. So those are the four guys that are our captains. The team's lined up behind them. I don't even know why they take the flip. Coach, Ar uh, the Lockhart Lions are going to kick to start the game, and then they're going to receive to start the second half. If that's their, that is definitely going to be their try for it anyways because that's what they seem to do almost every single game. <laughs> And, again, we have um, Rudy Cadillo is giving us uh, the information on varsity girls who have already made the playoffs, by the way. And that's always exciting to see them young ladies make the playoffs. And, you know, they, they've done an excellent job under Coach Both. And, you know, it, the, you know, it shows they're in the playoffs. And, you know, of course, they got a big game coming up against uh, Dripper Springs, I believe, next week. So, you know, even though they made the playoffs, I'm pretty sure they want to put Dripping Springs, uh, you know, put them as a feather in their cap in a, of teams they've defeated so far this season. So Yeah, and, we, well, and we're going to be doing that game. I know McKelty will be there. I'm going to be there. Um, I'll be there. I want that to be okay. my first, first volleyball game that I've gone to. Okay, well, that's going to be next Tuesday. I believe the game starts at 630 for Varsity Girls. Now, I say that, and we were supposed to start last Friday – 
because it was bye week for the boys. <laughs> we were supposed to start at 7.30, and McKelty and I started at 9 o'clock that night and saw some exciting volleyball. And the girls did win, by the way. And <laughs> Like I said, Bernie Champion's going to receive the ball. <laughs> yep. So Herman does his thing again. <laughs> I think he sends them out there with a two-headed coin or a two-tail coin and says, hey, just pick it to win it and decline it. So – in the first half, it's going to be the Lockhart Lions who are wearing all white with maroon trim and their maroon helmets with the Lions on the side. Bernie Champion is in their dark blue, and they have their silver outlinings, and uh, they will be going right to left. Again, if you didn't get here in time to hear, the one guy that we have to watch out for tonight is number two, Luke Boyers. He's a junior quarterback. He's deadly with his feet, and he's just as good with his arm. We're really going to have to watch him. And then he's got those 6'3 wide receivers that we're going to have to watch out for. Yes, definitely. And Luke Boyers was a wide receiver last year. Yep. And he moved over to quarter to the quarterback position. And just like Coach Herman talked about, he's he's got a, he's got a good arm. He's got good receivers to throw to. But because of his speed, his feet is going to be the difference in this ball game if Bernie Champion is going to want to come out with a victory. And uh, he's good. the Lockhart Lions are going to have to match their speed with the speed of the the Bernie chart the Bernie Champion Chargers offense well it looks like number 22 uh, Tamari Jenkins is going to be one of the guys back for him and I think the other guy is Kyle Bowman and we will have our usual culprit I call him the toe poker Eduardo Ponce the junior will kick it off and here we go. It's a high, high kick. It's at the 24, out to the 30. He's got a room. He breaks at the 40 to the 50. He's down to the 40 where he's pushed out of bounds by number five, Alex Thompson. A great return and a bad way to start the game for Lockhart, but we'll see how the defense comes back. Definitely great blocking up on the front line for the Bernie Champion Chargers. And, uh, you know, just there, there we saw some of the speed that uh, we're going to be seeing tonight from the Bernie Champion Chargers. And I apologize already because the, the the player roster we got is so small, I'm going to have a hard time deciphering everything. But we'll do our best. As you know, Boyers is, is the quarterback. Shotgun formation is going to roll out right. He's going to hold on to it. He's going to run, and he gets out of the tackle. They had him in the backfield. He's still on his feet down to the 20. He's inside the 20, down to the 16. We should have had him in the backfield, a missed tackle there, but a nice run for Boyers, and they're not stopping. They're going to run this thing, shoot, run and shoot here. Great uh, great run by the quarterback. He was, he was stopped for a loss, but was able to get away from the tackles and make some positive yardage and get a first down. Twins on each side. Jenkins in the backfield. A handoff to Jenkins up the middle. He's down inside the 15, down to about the 14-yard line. So a nice run for Jenkins. And these guys aren't playing around. This is just like the last time we played him. They get to the line of scrimmage, and they get ready to roll. Twins to each side for receivers. Jenkins is the running back. Uh, Boyer's in the backfield. They got the jailbreak defense going. He swings it out to the right and it's dropped. The ball was intended for number 14, Moreno, but he dropped the pass. It's third, uh, third and about six. Yes, that ball was was uh, severely underthrown, and you know, had had a uh, Boyer's been on target, he, he could have probably picked up a first down or maybe even a touchdown on that last play. So here it is with Boyers in the backfield again, that quarterback. He's going to fake the handoff, looking to the left as a wide-open receiver. He's down to the four-yard line, pushed out of bounds by Romero at about the three, and the receiver on the end of that was Beavers, Connor Beavers, one of their top receivers. So it's first and goal, Bernie Champion. So they have triplets to the right, single receiver to the left. Jenkins in the backfield with uh, Boyers. Shotgun formation, Boyer, or Boyer's up the middle. He gets down to about the one, and I'm not sure who got him. Let me look. Look like number 33 there, so that is going to be uh, Aiden Hernandez, who's had a great year this year. Here they go again. Boyer's, did he get in? It's going to be close, and they say Boyer's got in for the touchdown. So a one-yard touchdown run with 10.33 to go here in the first quarter, and Bernie Champion's on top, six to nothing. Oh, they're, they got the polecat. I haven't seen this since my junior high days. <laughs> the polecat, three receivers to the right. 
They've got a line set up on the on the left side, and they are running the pull cat, and he throws it out, and it's incomplete. So it falls incomplete, so the two-point conversion is no good. I have not seen that set up since I was in junior high. <laughs> well, you know, one thing we were, what we were expecting is the speed of this offense and also the speed of the plays that they're, they're, they're uh, going to be running through. They ran through one, two, three, four plays that took up just a little bit over a minute and 20 seconds. And on the one-yard touchdown run by Boyers, it is and the missed extra point conversion, it is six to nothing. Bernie Champion over the Lockhart Lions, but it's still early in the contest, and uh, Lockhart's going to be receiving the kickoff, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Lockhart Lions' offensive line is going to be able to handle the Bernie Champion defense. <laughs> oh my goodness. So here they go to kick off, and let's see who do we have kicking. It's going to be number five, Connor Beavers. Connor Beavers had a big game against us last year. I think we got Daytron Ellison back deep. Oh, Jesus Aldana with it. He gets it at the 27. He's going to get it out to about the 20 or 34 yard line. It's going to be close. Yeah, they're going to mark him at 34. So a pretty good return for Aldana there. And it looks like our, our deep man is going to be uh, Caleb Jennings, the kid we interviewed before the game. And they have the dynamic duo right in front of him and then Aldania right in front of them. So here we go with our slot T. As Coach said, he's probably thrown in a few new wrinkles. We'll see if those wrinkles come into play early on. First and 10, our own 34-yard line. 10-28 to go. It's 6 to nothing in favor of Bernie Champion. Tight formation, slot T. He's going to throw. Jackie Edwards is going deep. Oh, he just overthrows Daytron Ellison. A oh, fly heaven. pattern right over the middle. A good throw. I just a mistimed jump, or he might have had that. That would have probably, well, he would have fallen because he right. would have dove for it. But still, that would have been a nice way to start this game, Definitely. Daytron Ellison. And he had about four or five steps on the defensive back on him and just, uh, just an overthrown pass. And You know, and I – we're going to go back. we got two receivers to the left. Hand off up the middle to uh, Daquan Ellison, and he's going to get out to about the 37-yard line. But I don't want to take anything away from Jackie Edwards. That was a good pass. I'm not sure he overthrew him as much as Daytron mistimed the jump. Yes. But definitely, it was one. Of, I guess it's one of, this is one of those wrinkles that Cole Sherman was talking about in Definitely caught the Bernie Champion defense off guard on that one. Well, you know, in Lockhart, the slot T, we're known for running the football 100% of the time. This year, we've been airing it out. I like this stuff. We've got two receivers to the right. They're going to roll out with Jackie Edwards. He swings it out, and it's incomplete intended for uh, Cortland Zambrano. As they said, Zambrano would be part of the offense tonight. Just kind of threw it over the top, and he was well covered on that. So it'll be fourth and about seven. And will they have uh, Daytron Ellison punting like they did the last time? We'll have to see who's punting tonight. Yep, Daytron yeah. Ellison going to be the punter. This yeah. is something you got to watch out for because this is one of the dynamic duo, and if it's a fake, he could take it to the house. Yes, definitely. Looks like they have, if I'm reading the number right, Kyle Hill may be back to receive. There's the snap. There's the punt. It's a high punt. It bounces. It takes a Lockhart bounce, and Devin Clark is just going to go step on it at the 24-yard line, but there's a flag right in front of the Bernie Champion bench. He throws it at the sideline. I'm going to guess it's going to be on Bernie Champion, the way the referee's acting. Almost looked like a sideline infraction. And he threw it on the sideline yet again. That's the third time he's thrown that flag. So three and out for Lockhart. Bernie Champion has it right now at their 24, but it's going back further. It looks like it was a block in the back is what they're calling. So it'll be first and 10 for Bernie Champion. Let's see where it spots it up. 
it's going to be 14, 14 yep, first and 10 from their 14. So here we go again, deep, two deep safeties. Looks like we're in man-to-man, -man and they're running that jailbreak defense where none of the linemen stay put. They're just dancing around, and we have false flags. Start. Flags already a false start, so that's a good start for us. That's going to take them back nine yards. So down to the nine-yard line where it will be first and 15. I'm not liking this. They got two receivers over here on the near side. With Only one, one guy. Here comes uh, Devin Clark over to assist. So they're going to hand it off to Jenkins up the middle. Nice run by Jenkins. He gets almost back to the original line of scrimmage where he's brought down by Eddie Tukar. And I think that was uh, Richard Moya with him. No, no, it was Alex Sosa. I'm sorry. So it'll be second and 11. Trips to the left, single receiver to the right. As they're out to throw, they hit their receiver, and he's out to the 25. First down, out to the 29, brought down by Devin Clark, and the receiver on that carry was number five, Beavers. Or check that, that was uh, Gray. Gray. I remember Gray. Here they go again. Jenkins to the outside. He gets hit hard, but he's still moving his feet. Two car was the first to get there, and again, it was number 38 helping out, and that is Eli Green, the senior. You know, that's one of the things that Coach Herman was talking about. You know, they're going to they're gonna have to count on gang tackling because it's going to be difficult to tackle these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Quick, quick swing pass to Beavers on the outside. He gets out to about the 36-yard line where he's tackled by Daytron Ellison. Great tackle by Daytron Ellison right there. It sure was. Third and about three is what they're looking at. Triplets to the left, single receiver to the right. Boyers, shotgun formation with Jenkins in the backfield. They're going to fake the handoff. He's looking. He's going to roll out right. He's got room to run, but and he's going to run. Nope, he throws it, and what a one-handed catch. Connor Beavers killed us last year and makes a beautiful one-handed catch right there to move the sticks. So it's out to the 46-yard line where it's first and 10. Definitely great one-handed catch and great job by Boyers to make him make the Lions defense fake the run and then just set a little dunk to the receiver. Here comes Boyers to the left. He's got some room, and he breaks three to the 40. He gets down to about the 38. It looked like Daytron Ellison brought him down, and it's another first down. Right now, Lockhart has no answer for this offense. Like we got a line down right now about the 37-yard line. Eli Green is limping off. He seems to be going on his own power, so that's a good sign. Checking in is number 22, George Renteria. So here we go, first and 10. The ball's at the 39-yard line of Lockhart. Six to nothing. Chargers already on top with 7.40 to go here in the first quarter. Three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Defense needing to uh, needing a stop right here on this uh, on this drive. Boyers high snap. There's a flag already. Illegal procedure again on the Chargers. So the single receiver over here is Brock Burton. He's a senior, one of those six three kids. At least he looks six three compared to Daytron Ellison. So the trips to the right, single receiver to the left. Jenkins in the backfield with Boyers. And we have a flag, and I think that might be on us. Nope, it's on them. They moved again. So our best defense have been penalty flags so far. <laughs> so it's going to go to first and 20 now. And I got to say, you know, being a Lion fan, I thought we jumped off sides, but they're, they're going to give us the five yards. So I like that. First and tw uh, 20, or second and 44, according to the, score, according to the scoreboard there. <laughs> but Let's it is first and 20, one receiver to the left, three to the right. Jenkins in the backfield with Boyers. Hands it off to Jenkins up the middle. He's got a big hole. He's down to the 40, down to the 35. Breaks the tackle. He's down to the 30. He's running around the corner, gets pushed out of bounds. And that is Eddie Tukar, I believe. Yep, Eddie Tukar took him out of bounds, but not before he gets another Charger first down. Like Coach said, this team is fast. 
something definitely that Coach Herman didn't want to see. A first down and 20, and you get the running back down the field, gets a first down and picks up about five more yards after that. So it's first and 10 from the 27. Boyers hits Beavers, and he gets about five, maybe six. Great tackle by Alex Thompson out there. Alex Thompson is tackle. another one that's had a great year tackling. So trips to the left side this time, a single receiver to the right. They have number 35 in the backfield. That's Lang this time. Boyers is looking. It's a screen over the middle. He gets the ball. He's down to the 10. He's still on his feet, churning his feet. Inside the 10, almost to the 5. It's going to be a first and goal for the Chargers as he hit number 8, and that is Sam Gray over the middle on a screen pass. So single receiver to the left, trips to the right. Handoff. Nope, he fakes the handoff. Connor's looking to throw. He hits his man, and that is an easy touchdown, a five-yard variety, and that touchdown goes to Trevor Smith. So it's, what was that, about a five-yard touchdown reception? Uh, six-yard touchdown. Six-yard touchdown reception. All right. So right now we're looking at 12 to nothing with 6.14 to go, and it looks like they'll be going for the two-point conversion again. Yeah, this time no tricky at all. They got uh, three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Boards gets a snap, rolls to his right side, looking for a receiver in the end zone. Gets the pass off, but it's going to be incomplete and no good. So that's the second time in a row, and it is with 6.14 left to go here in the first quarter. It is Bernie Champion 12, Lockhart Lions 0. Let's go ahead and go to a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Black Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we are back here. And we're getting ready to kick the ball or get the ball kicked off to us again. Uh, so far, it just hasn't been a good start for uh, Lockhart. Hopefully, they can turn this around. Yes, definitely. And the two drives that Bernie Champions already had, they've already ran the ball, uh, ran 15 plays on the Lions as the Lions have only had the ball for one possession, and they've only they went three and out in that possession. So this uh, this drive right here, the Lockhart Lions have to sustain the drive, keep it going, chew some clock off the some time off the clock and get this ball into the end zone for a touchdown to, to still be in striking range. And there's the kick. It's a deep one this time, and it's going to get back to the back of the end zone where Caleb Jennings is going to run after it, but it goes out of bounds. So we'll get it first and 10 at the 25-yard line with 6.14 to go here in the first quarter. Let me go and give you a rundown of the Meitler Storage game break for tonight's contest in District 14, 5A Division Two. At Memorial Minutemen, it is Alamo Height Mules 14 to nothing over the Minutemen. 6:21 left to go in the first quarter. Tyve over over the Coyotes there at uh, the Honey Bowl Stadium is 7-0 with 7:44 left to go in the first quarter. Lockhart Lions are down 12 to nothing here at Bernie Champion with 6:14 left to go in the first quarter. And Medina Valley defeated Kennedy Rockets 42 to seven last night. Daytron Ellison around the left side, and he didn't get much there. He got back maybe to the original line of scrimmage. So we're going to be looking at second and 10. So it hasn't been a good start offensively, although it's been exciting because we've had a couple pass plays that look like they could have happened. But we're, we're right now, we're back to the slot T trying to get the ground game going. We're down 12 to nothing. As Emilio said, we have one receiver to the right side. That is Cortland Zambrano. They're going to roll out with Jackie Edwards to the right. He's going to throw it to Daytron Ellison with a nice catch. He catches that at about the 33-yard 33, 33 line. It's going to be about two yards shy yep. of the first down. So Daytron Ellison with a great catch, a nice rollout pass by Jackie Edwards. And I've got to say, the kid's a sophomore. Just keep in mind, folks, this kid is a sophomore. He throws the ball extremely well, and he's a great runner as well, not to mention – Great kid and a smart kid. Yes. And my neighbor. 
<laughs> so, uh, Devin How many Clark, neighbors you got? I got a lot of neighbors. <laughs> Devin Clark on the right side to give it to Daquan Ellis, and he is in trouble, and he gets manhandled by half the team, and you can tell they're after him. They sent at least eight guys after him. So it is fourth down and about four. The ball's at the 31-yard line of Lockhart, where we'll probably be punting again, I would guess. But, again, we have Coach Herman, so you never know. Yes. And it looks like the punt team is coming out. Daytron, Daquan Ellison is still back there at the punt formation. I don't know that we would fake in this position, but you never know. That's not that far to go. And Daytron is fast. So Daytron's talking to somebody on the sidelines. And the clock is down to five, and they're going to call timeout. I thought they were wasting a lot of time. So the timeout for yeah. Lockhart. We'll take a break here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports to Black Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. Now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Bernie Champion High School where Faith Herman trying to get us some butter up points as she went out to the referees and gave each one of them a drink of water out of a water bottle. So that was good of Faith. She's trying to help us out there. Yes, that last time, that timeout that was called out by the Lockhart Lions, Lions only had 10 players on the field, so that's that was the reason for the timeout. They're not really trusting we're going to punt, so they're kind of up on it. It's on the ground. He will punt. It's a high punt, not much distance. Not much. Di it's going to take a terrible bounce, too. Daquan Ellison is one that ran it down, and they will get it first and 10 at the Lockhart 39. So it didn't come off his foot well, and it had a bad backspin on it. And so that's going to give him great field position. With 4.07 to go here in the first quarter, Bernie Champion up 12 nothing. Yes, definitely. That, that, that punt netted only eight yards for the Lockhart Lions and gives Bernie Champion great field position to start this drive off. I just got a thing, a thing from uh, Rudy Cadillo as the b girls are winning 9-5. to five, And as I'm saying that, they go reverse around the, with uh, Beaver around the right side. And he literally takes the reverse all the way down to about the 25-yard line of Lockhart for an easy first down. Right now, Lockhart's defense just cannot find an answer to stop this team. Two receivers to the left. Boyers is going to look to throw again. No, he's gonna. He's looking to his left side. He's gonna roll out. He's gonna throw it at the last minute. Almost, Almost intercepted. intercepted, and it was a great attempt by Alex Thompson, the junior, making a diving attempt at the interception. But he just came up a little short on it. Stops the clock with 3:37 to go in the first quarter. It's second and ten. And Emilio, I, you know, I know you got to worry about Boyer's feet, but yes. right now it's. His passing is kind of killing us. So yes, definitely. That's probably his second miscue of tonight, tonight's contest so far here in the first quarter. As he underthrew one badly at the, on the first drive, but uh, almost intercepted on this second on this uh, pass just now. Boyers will have it. He's going to give it to Jenkins up the middle. He goes around the corners down to the ten. He's going to go the distance. So that was an easy 25-yard touchdown by Jenkins, who basically took it around left tackle and never got touched. He got all the way to the end zone, and it now is 18 to nothing in the first quarter. Bernie Champion rolling right now. Yes, 3:30 left to go here in this first quarter. You know, this is definitely not something that uh, we Lion fans wanted to see. This Lockhart get in the hole this early in tonight's contest. And they're going for two again. He's, he's being, kind of, yeah, he's being he's, scrambled. Yeah, he's scrambled there. around. He's oh, going gosh. back. Oh, oh what well, a block. Yeah, there's a flag. There's going to be a clip. They're going to call that a clip, but decline it. <laughs> yeah, it. The result of the play without the penalty flag is is a no good uh, two point try as uh, Boyers ran out of bounds right around the three yard line. So once again, you know, 
they've gone three possessions so far and scored all three times, but at the same time they've gone 0 for 3 in extra point tries. So I guess if there's a bright spot, they have missed all their extra points. Right now it's just not been a good run. Well, definitely, because even at 18, Lockhart's still in two scores out. So, and you figure any of those uh, three uh, two-point conversion tries that they had, I mean, you're looking at, at 20, even 22, 24 points right now in the contest. So, to be down 18 to nothing, you're still two, two scores away from that. But, you know, I, of course, Coach Herman would have liked to seen it a little bit stronger and likes to see more uh, production from the offensive side of the ball. But it seems like, you know, you got to stop them so you could get a chance to get onto the offensive side. Well, we'll get things set up again, and we'll, we'll hope uh, hope we can get something going this time. Because, like I say, you know, I knew tonight was a big night for Bernie Champion. I mean, you, you never see Bernie go 0-3 in district play. I was a little worried about them coming out and being hungry, but that, so far they're really hungry because it's 18 to nothing. we got to find an answer quick. It'll be Beavers kicking it off. It'll bounce, and it'll be Daquan Ellison from the 8-yard line. He's out to about the 17 where he gets stacked up. So Daquan Ellison brings it out about 9 yards to the 17-yard line. That's where we'll have it first and 10. 3.25 to go, 18 to nothing. Just not a great start for your Lockhart Lions tonight. Yeah, so the only good thing about it is there's plenty of time here in this contest. Coach Herman still has plenty of time to fix – what needs to be fixed on the defense side of the ball to stop these guys, you know, because it's it's turn it's one thing he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to turn into a track meet, right, or a shootout because. Well, we got two receivers out wide. They're going to roll out right. He is in trouble, and he just throws it out of bounds. I'm not sure did he get outside where he needs to be. They're not going to throw flags. Good, and he looks injured on that. And I'm hoping it's what I think that he just got hit where guys do not like to be hit. 3.20 to go, two, second and 10 from the 18-yard line. Devin Clark, our 6'4 wide receiver, will check into the game. That's another guy you got to keep an eye on. Great hands, great leaping ability. He's got great speed with his long legs as well, too. They're going to hand it off to Daquan Ellis, and he's up the middle. He jumps out to about the 22-yard line for he's tripped up. A good run. We'll definitely take that for uh, for yardage. Picks up five yards on the run. He's going to make a third down and long and a long five. Three minutes to go here in the first quarter. So Cortland Zambrano, as they said, was going to be more in of an impact on the offensive side of things. He checks in. Salero brings his team to the line. Two two receivers out wide to the left. Right up the middle, they go. Not real sure about that call. It was uh, Aldania up the middle. I think he might have got a yard, maybe two. No, it looks like a yard. Fourth and about five. So we're in another vicarious situation with 2.20 to go here in the first quarter. As number 12, Kyle Hill is back to receive on this punt. The last time Datron punted, he had his toe up, and it made it go straight up in the air instead of getting some distance on it. So hopefully he'll be able to straighten this out a little bit better. Because his first punt was really well. Yes, it was. Here's the snap. He picks it up. His punt's much better. It's on a line this time. It's going to get a Lockhart bounce. It's going to roll down to about the 41-yard line where they'll have first and 10 when they come back. So with a minute 50 to go in the first quarter, 18 to nothing, Bernie Champion, we're going to take a break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and Kmet Sports Group Bright Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Bernie Champion High School where there's twins to the left, one receiver to the right. Boyers is looking deep, and he's going to air it out for Beavers, who's wide open, and he drops it. 
That is the first time I've ever seen Beavers drop a football. Last year, he was unstoppable for us. This year, he's wide open. All he's got to do is catch, and he walks in the end zone. He dropped it. Thank you. We <laughs> needed that. We definitely needed that. That's a great arm by, oh by Luke goodness. Boers. He threw that ball 55 yards in the air. So we have just an uh, unfortunate drop on that play. Twins to the right, twins to the left. Jenkins in the backfield. He's going to fake the handoff. Swing pass out to number eight. That is Gray. Gray is still on his feet out to the 50. So he's close to a first down. It'll be third and about one at the 50-yard line. Gray is another player who's done well against us. I remember these boys well from last year. Triplets to the right, single receiver to the left. Jenkins in the backfield. Boyers, who's put on a show already at quarterback. Going to hand it off to Jenkins up the middle. He's going to get across the midfield stripe down to the 44-yard line. Where they're, nope, 45-yard line where they move the sticks again with a minute and two seconds to go here in the first quarter. Still waiting from Rudy Cadillo to find out how that first game for Lockhart went. I know it's got to be getting close to the end. Twin receivers to the right, single receiver to the left. Jenkins in the backfield with Boyers. Shotgun formation. They're going to fake the handoff. They throw it over the top. Nice reception down to the 35-yard line. He's gang tackled there. And uh, was that Caleb Jennings? It looks like maybe it was Caleb Jennings yes. on the tackle. So it is now second. No, first and ten. First and ten clock still moving. Uh, picked up enough yards for the first down on that play. Is a tight end snuck right in, right inside the zone of the defense and uh, they were able to catch it and run for a first down. And that was Smith with the catch. They got twin receivers to the left. They're actually going to switch receivers, so there's twins on each side. Jenkins is in the backfield, scored the last touchdown. Boyers, the quarterback, shotgun formation. Will they get this off? Yes, they do. Connor's looking to throw over the middle. It's caught again by Beavers, and it's a nice tackle by Datron Ellison, but he gets down to the 19-yard line, move the sticks again, but that's going to end the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, it is 18 to nothing. Bernie Champion Chargers on top. We're going to take a break right here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports Food Right Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Bernie Champion High School where we're kind of watching the scoreboard. We're going to have to give us get us one of these scoreboards because you can watch things on TV, and it's pretty neat. Uh-oh, that could be a Rudy Cadillo. Oh, wow. So the Lady Lions look like they struggled in this first match as they were able to win 25-11. to Another easy win for the Lady Lions in volleyball. And as Emilio said, if you want to see some of the best volleyball you may see in the state of Texas, come Tuesday night to the Lockhart Lady Lions gym and watch them play Dripping Springs. The only loss for the Lady Lions this year has been to Dripping Springs. Yes, in the district. Yep, so that'll be Tuesday night at 6.30. You'll have us there. So tune in. But if I was you, I'd go to the game and watch it. So here they are, first and 10 from the 19-yard line. The Chargers, they have three receivers to the right, one to the left. Connor's in trouble. Boyer's looking down the field. He throws it to the back of the end zone. The only person that was catching out was going to be Caleb Jennings, and he was out of bounds. Second and 10, 11.53 to go here, second quarter. Great pressure up front for the defensive line for the Lockhart Lions and great coverage in the back for the defensive backfield. You know, Boyer's really had nowhere to go but to throw that ball out of bounds. Well, you know, I would, again, this is just me brainstorming. I would almost not let this kid roll out. He's more dangerous rolling out than he is sitting there in a the pocket. But they have twin receivers to each side. Jennings is, or yes, Jennings is in the backfield with him. Or Jenkins, I'm sorry, Jenkins in the backfield. He's going to throw a timing pattern to the left side, and it's caught. Easy catch, and it's made by number seven. Uh, that's Brock Burton. 
Brock Burton, the senior, and it's one play, 19 yard touchdown pass. So that's with 11.46 to go here in the first half. Things just keep getting worse right now for your Lions. It looks like uh, Bernie Champion is bringing out their uh, field goal unit for the first time in tonight's contest. Wait for the snap. Snap is back. Hold it down. The kick is up. And it is good. So Beavers knocks home the extra point. And I remember last year, Connor Beavers did it all last year. As a matter of fact, at one point last year, if I remember right, in our game, he uh, kicked off. He was the kicker. Kicked off an onside kick, and he recovered <laughs> the kick. That's just memory. That's what I remember of that. Right now it's 25 to nothing. Bernie Champion on top with 11.46 to go here in the first half. And if Lockhart doesn't find an answer soon, this is going to get ugly. Yes, definitely. And, you know, already, you know, with the 14 seconds into the second quarter, you know, Bernie Champion has run 25 plays to Lockhart Lions. Uh, Ten, so they're so. averaging a point per play. Right. Gee, many Christmas. That's some. That's an offense right there. And we played Medina Valley tight. This this is totally okay. shocking me. This I did not expect this tonight. Yeah, but it's something that Coach Herman to spoke about the speed of this Bernie Champion team, and you know right now we're seeing it. There's a deep kick. It's over Jennings' nice head. And he'll pick it up, and they're going to call it another touchback. Well, we'll have it first and 10 at our own 25. So hopefully Lockhart will be able to get something going here. Um, while we have a little bit of a break, did you want to do some scores or see how the other games are going? Yes, we'll give a Meitler Storage game break right now. It is uh, Alamo Heights over Memorial, 21 to nothing, still in the first quarter. Tyvee 14 to 7 over the Coyotes of Uvalde and here at Bernie Champion I or Bernie ISD Stadium it's 24 to nothing or 25 to nothing champion over Lockhart. Well, they went around the corner on a pitch out with uh Daytron Ellison and he literally got a yard on it. They're like you said their defensive speed is something else cuz when you can run down to Tron Ellison you got some speed. Yes, definitely. Almost could have called for a late hit out of bounds, but it, I guess it was right on the edge of it. Salero brings the team to the line of scrimmage in a tight formation. It's a handoff to Daquan Ellison around the right side. He's out to the 30, to the 35, 40, 45, He's got 50. one man to beat. He breaks around the corner there. He gets caught from behind and is knocked down at about the 47, no, 37-yard line of uh, Bernie Champion. A sign of life for the Lockhart Lions with a great run by Daquan Ellison. Yes, definitely. Daquan Ellison gets got around the outside with his speed and was able to outrun the, the outside linebackers. Had one man to beat but had to cut back in, and they were able to track him down from behind and make the tackle after a huge game. Cortland, Cortland Zambrano out on the right side. They're going to quick pass to Cortland. Oh, it's overthrown. Had he hit him in the chest, he would have had a few yards out of that. That was a nice uh, slant pattern. And, again, Cortland's another kid with some speed. If we'd have hit him on the numbers, he probably would still be running. Yes, fortunately, Cortland Zabrano tipped that ball, and that ball hung up in the air for a little bit too long, but just not long enough for a Bernie Champion a defensive back to run up there and pick it off. So tight formation this time, second and ten. They're going to give the end around to Detron Ellison. He cuts around. He's down to the 35. He's to the 30, to the 25, down to the 20, where he's thrown out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. A nice run by De Detron Ellison. They're going to mark him out at the 21-yard line. First and 10. I haven't been able to say that for a while. Yes, definitely, because after the first three drives, the locker had, they didn't even pick up not one first down. And here, already here in this fourth drive, they've already had two of them. So Cortland Zambrano back in the – play of things here. Solero takes the team up to the line of scrimmage. Tight formation in the slot T. Jackie Edwards Jr. is going to hand it. No, he rolls it out. Nice fake. He hits Daytron Ellison over the middle. He's down to the 10, to the 5. He's down to the 1-yard line. 
Jackie Edwards faked me out with the handoff and made a nice pass to Daytron Ellison, and he gets it down to the one-yard line. First and goal. Third first down in a row for your Lions. Yes, definitely. To punch this into the end zone right now is got got to, is going to have to pump up the Lockhart Lions defense yes. and get them started and get them on the roll. So Salero brings the team to the line in a tight formation. Look for Daquan. No, it's Jackie Edwards on a quarterback sneak, but I don't know that he got in. Oh, they oh, got, yes, in. got in. Jackie Edwards gets in. The sophomore scores his second varsity touchdown of his career on a one-yard touchdown run. He did that with 9.28 to go here in the second quarter. Great drive for the Lockhart Lions. Definitely something that they really, really, really needed at this point of the contest with them being down 25 to nothing. Now it's 25 to 6 as we await the extra point try. And uh, we got two huge first downs as there's a timeout called on the behalf of the Lockhart Lions. But, uh, Scott, this is something that we needed on offense now. We need to take this momentum and put it over to the defensive side of the ball and stop the Bernie Champion offense. I mean, one or two stops, and with the offense clicking like this, we could be right back in this ball game. Exactly. Our our offense just had to figure things out (laughs) against this very fast defense, and now we have figured it out, and we've moved the ball well on this drive. And we keep that up. Like you said, a couple stops here and there, and this is going to turn into a ball game again. That's just it, though. We have to have the defense step up and do their their job because they've been on the field a long time tonight. Yes, that last drive for the Lions took six plays, two minutes and 28 seconds off the clock. It was a 75-yard drive capped off by a one-yard touchdown run by Jackie Edwards, Jr. So we're going for two. They get, they're going to go to Daquan Ellison, who's going to get around the corner, and he scores it. The two-point conversion by Daquan Ellison is good. Make it 25-8 to eight with 9.28 to go here in the first half. You're listening we'll to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports with Vibe Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we are back here at Bernie Champion High School where it's 25-8. to eight. The Lockhart Lions just scored and then scored a two-point conversion. Now the key is getting a stop. And with right now, it looks like number 14 will be back to receive again. That's John Moreno. And number 22, the halfback or the full running back, as you want to call him, in uh, T- Tamari Jenkins. And the kid, Tamari Jenkins, had a nice night running the football for him. Yes, he definitely has. And... You know, it all his uh, success so far in this ball game has come off of what Luke Boyers has been able to do so far as a quarterback for the Bernie Champion Chargers, and has done an amazing job so far. So here comes uh, Ponce to kick off, and he's going to do an onside kick. There it is, and we, we got, got it. Aldonia comes up with it. I believe that was Aldonia. Somebody's down. We did get the ball. I'm pretty positive that was Aldonia that came up with it. So that's got to wake you up a little bit. I wondered why he was standing so close to the football. I thought, what's he going to yeah. do? Because he normally is not that close to football. Definitely. You know, it, and at this time where the defense has having a hard time stopping the offense of the Burning Champion Chargers, an onside kick is one way to keep the Champion Charger offense on the – on the sidelines. So we'll start with a tight formation at the 49-yard line. Uh, Bernie Champion, they're going to pitch it out to Detron. Detron's looking to throw. He's going to hang it up there for Cortland That's Zambrano. Fair, yes. And we have pass interference as Cortland Zambrano could not get back to the ball because of the defender. So that's going to be a great play. Detron Ellison was a little short with the pass. But, hey, it was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> More importantly, it's going to be a 15-yard penalty plus – a first down for the local Lions, and it's going to get them closer or deeper into champion territory. Well, one thing about us this year versus the first two years that I was doing football here, we're not a team that 
if we fall behind, we can pass this year. So we have the opportunity to get back in the ball game. Yes, definitely. And, and past years, you, we threw the ball three times tops usually in a game if we were lucky. So we've thrown the ball more tonight than we have all of the last season, I believe. And here we are rolling out right with Jackie Edwards. He's going to throw it over the top. Dick tr Jack, uh. There's Jackie again needing to set his feet before he throws. Right. He's and just getting a little too excited. Yes, he sees the open receiver and just uh, it's just the mechanics thing. It's, he's not planting his feet as he's you know to make the throw, as well, we saw last week and you know and that fourth down pass that he threw against Memorial. He had plenty of time to set his feet and make the throw, and it seemed like he had some time here. But you know once you see an open wide receiver, you got to hit him. Yeah, he uh, he's just a sophomore, folks. Give him some time. This kid's going to be something else. Ball's handed up the middle, and a great run there. They'll get it down inside the 30-yard line, down about the 29-yard line, and it, that was uh, Daytron Ellison on the carry. So at the 29, going to make it about third and five with 8.58 to go here in the first half. Yeah, this is going to be a big play for the Law Court Lions. They need to get a first down, but more than likely, even if they pick up a yard or two, you're still looking at – they're probably still going to be looking at a four-down oh, territory yeah. right here. We are definitely not in field goal range. And they're going to give a handoff to Daquan Ellison. He's going to get stacked up, but he does get some yardage. It's going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. And there you have it. One of the smallest guys in the field, Daquan Ellison, runs so hard and never stops his legs that he made that play himself because he was stopped and he was able to pick up some extra yardage. Yes, yeah, so and once again, as I mentioned, this is four down territory for the Lockhart Lions. And, you know, you de like I said, you don't want to give the ball back to the Bernie Champion offense at this point. Adam Romero split out right. The ball is, they're looking at Romero on the slant, and he throws it behind him. out of his arms. He throws it behind him. That would have been an awesome catch, which Adams made, but he just threw it behind him. So with 8.06 to go here in the first half, it's still 25-8 to champion, and uh, they'll have first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. So, again, some sophomore blunders. He'll grow into this, give him some time. Jackie Edwards is only starting his third game as a varsity quarterback. He's doing just fine. He'll get this. Now it's going to be interesting to see how this line defense is going to be able to adjust. Jenkins just up as the middle. Offense head. He's to the 30. He gets out to about the 35. He's brought down at the 34. Jenkins is a, a hard problem in itself, not to you know, take away from the fact they throw the ball really well. So now they have a new running back in the backfield. That's going to be number 34. I got to look in the little guy print here, and that's Christian Vargas. Yes, as uh, Jenkins is uh, limping off the side, off to the sideline, and you know you hate to see that because this young man's done an outstanding job so far. And like I said, his success has has come off of what uh, Luke Boers has been able to do it as a quarterback for the Chargers. So Vargas in the backfield, two receivers to the right, two to the left, second and about three and a half. Boyer's looking to throw. He throws it to the left side where it's caught for a first down and then some. It's Beavers again out to about the 43-yard line. As last year, Beavers tore us up all over the field. Tonight he's doing the same thing. The only thing he's done is gifted us a drop pass, which would have been a touchdown. Yes, definitely. You know, it's one of those things, uh, you know, Lockhart Lions, they're giving way too much uh, distance in between themselves and the court and the receivers. Boyer's trying to go around the right side. He gets stuck by number 38. And, again, you know, we had not called his name a lot lately, but Eli Green has had a good game tonight. Yeah. Eliza Sanchez was in there to clean it up. So it is second and nine. Twin receivers to the, uh, to the right. Twin receivers to the left. Keep an eye on Beavers. Vargas in the backfield with Boyer's. He's going to hand it off to Vargas up the middle, and he gets about two yards, but the defense did a pretty good job. And there's the guy I interviewed before the game, Luis Torres, who got in there and made that tackle. I'm going to mark him down at the 47 after a three-yard run by Vargas. So about third and seven. Twins on each side receiver-wise. Boyer's looking to pass. He rolls to the left. He's now back to the right. He's looking for somebody. He's going to run with it. And he is caught by Eliza Sanchez, and he will not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Sanchez with a great defensive play there. And Bernie Champ is looking at their first fourth down of tonight's contest. He's going to lose two yards 
on that play. I doubt this team's going to punt. I have a feeling they're going for this. And they are. So they'll have three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. They are very confident in the fact that they're going to get a first down at fourth and eight. It's going to be a huge play for the Lions defense. He's going to roll out right as Boyers. He's looking down the field. He makes the completion. And it's good enough for a first down as he completes it to Reed Cantrell, a sophomore wide receiver. Rudy Cadillo just checking in, saying the Lady Lions are up 19-12 in the second game of their match. Here it's 25-8, Bernie Champion with 5.56 to go in the first half. Twin receivers to the right, one to the left. Boyer's looking left. He's going to go long, and he hits Beavers. Oh, my oh. goodness, he drops another one. Two huge drops by Beavers right there. And, uh, of course, the first drop that he had on the previous possession didn't hurt them because they ended up scoring a touchdown after all. But this just gives the Lion defense just a little bit more hope to try and stop this be this uh, Bernie Champion offense. So they're going to have three receivers to the left again, one to the right. It looks like they still have Vargas in the backfield with Boyers. And they're going to – flags on the play. Well, they didn't get that one off. Procedure, that's going to help. They've jumped a lot tonight. That's about the fourth one. They had, they had, uh, I believe, two on their first drive, and then they had one on their second one. And now this one's the fourth one of the of tonight's contest. You know, something that Lockhart had struggled with, you know, several, a couple of years back with so many false starts. And uh -huh. Bernie Champion is uh, doing their part to help the Lions out. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Vargas in the backfield with Boyers. Shotgun formation. A low snap. He digs it up, though. Boyers is a heck of an athlete. He's looking for his man over the top, and he just overthrows him. Again, he was looking for number 15, Reed Cantrell, a sophomore. From up here, he looks pretty tall and lanky. He had us beat. A little bit better throw, and they probably scored again. So it's There's now. a penalty flag on the oh, play. Oh, there is, isn't there? It's declined. It'll bring up third and 15. So we've been beaten deep a lot tonight. We're, our deep safeties are not keeping their guys in front of them. No, and that's that's something that uh, Bernie Champion is exposing right now. Luckily for the Lions, you know, they've had already three drops on deep passes right now, and, you know, you just can't give them too many chances like that. Three to the left, one to the right. Boyers is looking to throw. He's going to run with it on a quarterback drop the middle, and he gets hammered. And that is the senior captain, number 35, Alex Sosa with the tackle. It's going to get to the 44-yard line. It's going to be fourth down and 12, and, you know, Bernie Champion hasn't, is, isn't bringing their punt team out. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. And the thing about uh, Beavers, he's such a good kicker, they're getting close to his range. Two receivers to the right, to the left. Boyers takes another low snap. He's looking deep. He's surveying the field. He's got all day to throw it. He's going to let it fly down the right side of the field. It's overthrown again. Great coverage there by number eight, Devin Clark, the 6'4 senior. Super coverage. That'll give a turnover on down, so Lockhart holds him for the first time tonight. That's a good job for us. Now let's get the ball in the end zone. Yes, definitely, and that's going to be the key point right here because with five minutes and six seconds left to go here in the first half, you know, if Lockhart gets a good drive and, and takes time off the clock, who knows, they just might put this ball inside the end zone and uh, be able to get the ball in the, the second half. They're going to give it to Datron Ellison. He gets about two on the end around. A good fake because at first I thought he gave it to Aldonia, and then when Aldonia got through the line, I realized he hadn't. So Daytron Ellison picks up two, making it second and eight with 4.50 to go here in the first half. 25 to eight Chargers. Tight formation in the slot T here. They're going to go around with Aldonia this time. A nice spin move, but he doesn't get much. He might have gotten a yard on that carry. Rudy Cadillo gives me the report that the girls win the game two of the match as they win 25 to 15. So 25 to 11, 25 to 15, and here it's 25 to 8 with 4.15 to go here in the first half. About third and six. 
Tight formation. Roll out right is Jackie Edwards. He is Datron Ellison for and the, the first, first down. down. He gets it down to the 44-yard line of Bernie Champion. Move the sticks. I'm liking this hitting Datron Ellison out of the backfield. He's wide, He's been wide open just about every time they've ran this play. So, you know, it, it's worked so far. And it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Bernie Champion is going to be able to adjust to that and how the Lockhart Lions offensive coaching staff is going to adjust to that as well also. If he, if if uh, Jackie could get that slant pass down, that's open too. He throws it to Detron Ellison again, and it's out to about the 37. They're going to mark him at the 36-yard line. So Edwards to Ellison, and Detron having a nice night receiving the ball. So it does go down to the 36-yard line where it will be second and two. Lockhart's moving the ball with the air. Yes, definitely. And you notice uh, Jackie Edwards on these last two passes, he wasn't rushing himself. He right. Sets, he sets his feet and makes a throw, and every time he does that, he finds success in doing so. Two receivers to the right. Jackie Edwards rolls out. There's penalty flags. It's illegal be start on the lines. Yeah. On Lockhart. So we decided to pay them back the favor for doing it for us four times. <laughs> That's too bad because I saw where he was throwing and where he was looking was wide open. Just kind of keep an eye on Adam Romero. Like Emilio said, when Jackie was missing his passes, he was dancing with his feet. He didn't have his feet set. Now he's taking his time setting his feet, and he's throwing the ball really well. Let's hope he can keep that rolling here. And we got Adam and Datron far right. He's going to roll out right, looking, throwing it over the top, holding. Oh, it's got to be pass. That's got to be a pass. Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe Herman Edwards is or, or he is, Herman is mad. He's living. He, he, he held him the entire way down the field. Adam Romero couldn't even move. So they call it incomplete. It's going to be third and seven. <laughs> Definitely a missed call by the – Back judge right there it was, as the defender was all over the wide receiver, over all over Adam Romero, and just held on to him, would not let him go. So here we are, tight formation, third and seven at the 41-yard line. They're going to give it to Datron Ellison. He breaks three to the 35, down to the and 30, goes. to the 25, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Datron Ellison from 41 yards out. Nice play. Way to bounce back, boys. We have us a ball game. Definitely. Right now, as it is 25 to 14 at the moment, and uh, as we await the extra point try right there, and, uh, you know, great great series again for the Lockhart Lions, and they got what they definitely needed. On defensive, defense, they got to stop. They got the ball back on the offensive side of the ball. They didn't take too much time off the clock, but they came out of this drive with points. Now it opens up for the Lockhart Lions defense to make another stop and to give this Lockhart Lions offense another chance to get into the end zone as they're going for two right they now. They are going for two again. Will they run the same play? Are they going to look at something new? They're going to look at something new. Trying to hit Adam or, or No, that was – Oh, there's the flag. As they'll get a they second chance. They were trying chance. to get Devin Clark in the corner. Devin Clark picks up the flag and gives it back to the official. That was nice of him. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Devin Clark – being a scary receiver at six foot four, they had to grab him, and there was a penalty. So it's going to move it a little closer. Yeah. This might be a Daytron Ellison or uh, Daquan Ellison run now, oh, or even Jackie yeah, Edwards. Yeah, we might see another Jackie Edwards run up the middle with the with the defense with the offensive push from the back. I would say two our, yards out. Our quarterback is just as good a running quarterback as their quarterback. They're going to hand it off to Daquan Ellison. And Daquan is in for the two-point conversion. Make it 25-16. The Lions are back in this ballgame. Definitely, this is something that the Lions definitely needed, as we talked about just a few minutes ago. You know, of course, they didn't chew the clock up like we would, like they would have liked to, but with Daytron, Daytron Ellison hitting that 41-yard home run right there, with uh, 2.43 left to go in the contest. Bernie Champion's going to get the ball back, and uh, it's going to determine on this Law Card Lions defense to come up with another huge stop and give the ball back to the Lions with plenty of time. So, dare I say, because of Coach Herman, do we try another onside kick? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I like the response. <laughs> I can't say what, what we heard, but I, I think, uh, you know, it, it's 
It worked one time. Why not? You keep the offense well, off the field if this if it's he, successful. He's a gambling man, so we'll see. It looks like they're setting up for one because he's not but two yards off the ball. And there it is again. And he was off. The ball is loose, but he touched it before 10 yards. No, he's able to do that. I didn't think you could. Do yeah. it. You can? I did not think you could touch it till it went 10 yards. But they're going to say yeah, it's Bernie Champion's ball. Well, another close call right there. And, uh, you know, Lockhart almost got their second onside kick. So, for tonight, they're one, one for one or one for two. But, uh, once again, the defense got to come up with a huge stop. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Boyer's in the backfield. It looks like Jenkins is back, and he is. Jenkins with the ball up the middle. He's down to the 40 to the 40 – or down to the 37-yard uh, line. I'll make that 38. Second and about four, 2.30 to go. 25-16, Bernie Champion is on top right now, and we have a guy limping off the field right now. Great hustle two, by that young man to get off the field. Two receivers each side. Jenkins up the middle. No, Boyer keeps it, throws it. Incomplete. incomplete. Great And coverage. they're going to throw a flag. Penalty. So what's the flag? Actually two on the play. And we have another player down. As we still wait for the initial call. Eli Green is going to hop off the field. And he had just came in for the defender that hobbled off the field that played before. I still haven't seen the call yet. Dead ball or legal man downfield. Okay. Well, that's helpful. So it'll be second and 10 from the 44-yard uh, line of Bernie Champion. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Boyer's in shotgun formation. Jenkins in the backfield with him. They're going to run with Jenkins. Jenkins barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that was number 75, if we don't call his name enough, Faustino Gonzalez. <laughs> Wrecking havoc yeah. up front. Festino has had a great season. Yes, definitely. Along with the uh, 82 car and Eli Sanchez in there for the tackle. And, you know, it's just one of those things that Coach Herman said is going to take more than one to bring each each of these uh, players down. Third and nine. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to roll out left. Boyers is looking down. He fires the ball. Over and it's shoots. incomplete. Yes, definitely. It's going to be fourth down and nine. And, uh, you know, in the movie Major Leagues, that sounded like it was fast because he <laughs> fired that thing. I don't even know if that kid could have caught the ball as hard as he threw it. Fourth and nine. It's going to be another huge play for this Lions defense as uh, the last time Bernie Champion went for it on fourth down, they, uh, Luke Boers overthrew his intended receiver, giving the ball back to the Lions. If you get a stop here and can find the end zone one more time, you make this a one-score ball game. Yes, definitely. And they're going to call timeout as Bernie Champion. So with 1.53 to go here in the first half, it's 25-16. to 16. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Group Web Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at Bernie Champion High School where it's 25-16 to 16 with 153 to go here in the first half. Faith Herman again trying to help us out as she's giving water to all the referees. Y you know, you got to help us out all you can. So here we are. They're showing a punt. I'm not completely buying a punt in this position or in this situation. We have nobody back. We're playing it as if they're going to go for it, and they are going for it. I can't well, imagine got a receiver punting. drop back. Now they're actually going to punt it. He's going to – nice punt, but it's going to take our bounce good. Get away, get away. 
So we will get it first and 10 from our own 19-yard line with a minute 44. So we got to go 81 yards in a minute 44. And with the Ellison brothers, that's pretty easy. Well, we went 66 yards on that last scoring drive for the Lockhart Lions, and all it took was two minutes and 19 seconds on six plays. Of course, it was capped off by a 41-yard touchdown run, run by uh, Daytron Ellison. But, uh, you know, we definitely got a lot more yards to, to get through on this, on this drive, but it's possible. So we got two receivers to the right, Daytron and Romero. They're going to look to throw a screen on the back side to hit Daquan Ellison, but, man, they were ready for that one. Nothing there. They lost yardage. So they're going to be back at the 15. And lose four yards on the game. Fortunate enough that uh, Daytron Edison was able to catch that because it was a backwards pass at that point. Ellison with a lot of acrobatics just to get it to where he got it. Again, with the speed that Lockhart has, it would not be far-fetched to score on an 85-yard play at any point in this game. we got one receiver to the right. They're going to go up the middle with it. Daquan Ellison, not nothing there, but there's a fumble. I think they're fighting for the ball. They're fighting for the ball, and they say it is recovered by Bernie Champion. So Lockhart coughs it up, and it will be Bernie Champion's football, and they're going to be knocking on the door first and 10 from our 14-yard line. So a bad time to be turning the ball over. It definitely is, and, you know, especially with the short field that Bernie Champion has now with one minute, four seconds left to go here in the first half. Bernie Champion is going to have a, a, a shot to make this a, a two-score game. So it's two receivers to the right, two to the left. Boyers is back there. Let's see, who's he have? That is a Yang, or Lion. Gosh, this number is so small. Lang. They get it down to, they run the ball up the middle. They get it down to about the 12-yard line. Thank you for putting Jenkins back in because I can see his numbers. <laughs> Jenkins is on the field now. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Shotgun formation. Hand off to Jenkins up the middle, and he's going to cut back up. Two car brings him down finally, and he's inside the five-yard line where it looks like they'll have first and goal. As Bernie Chapman calls a timeout. And they're going to say he was short. No, nah, there's no way he was short of the first down. Uh, so they're going to take a measurement. I believe he needed to get to the four or past the four for the first down, and looks like they're going to first down goal, the yep. sticks. It's going to be first, first down and goal. go to go from the four-yard line. So Lockhart has got to stop them. They cannot let them score going into the half. Uh, Bernie Champion still has one more timeout to burn as well as the Lockhart Lions, but, you know, it's definitely – Lockhart was riding on a high until that uh, that fumble right there. So you put the defense back out there on the field, you know, it's it's a huge tax to ask him to come back out and make another stop. But it's, it could be done it's just as just long as the Lockhart Lions do run their assignments like they're supposed to and cover these receivers and uh, get an open, you know, an open field tackle. So there's one receiver to the left. There's two to the right, two running backs. An H back, the quarterback, and then it looks like um, number 35 is back in. That's Lang. I think we're going to the left. They are, and it's going to be the, a quarterback just going to keep it, trying to get to the end zone, and he's close, but they mark him down at the one. So Boyers was going for a sweep on the left side, and he got down to the one. There's 15 seconds and counting to go here. Quarterback sneak up the middle, and he's getting the push forward, and he scores. So a one-yard touchdown run by Luke Boyers with five seconds to go in the first half. Now makes it 31-16. to The Chargers on top. Yeah, with five seconds, there's not much Lockhart can do, but, you know, return the kickoff for a touchdown and then get the ball back to start the second half. But snap is back to hold us down. The kick is up. And it's yeah. right through the upright. So that's going to make it 31 to 16, 32 to 16, with five seconds left to go here in the halftime, in the first half. As uh, 
We're five seconds away from uh, cutting out for the Johnny and Sons Peyton Body sh Halftime Show. As uh, we'll probably uh, as soon as the halftime goes through, the Lockhart Line Band. I see that they're getting set up, so we're going to turn off our mics, get some stats set up for the Lockhart Line's offense, and. Uh, be able to turn on the crowd mic so you can listen to the sweet sounds of the Lockhart Line Roaring Band. And as soon as they're completed, we'll get to a couple of, of uh, commercial spots. And then we'll get back with our thoughts of the first half and what we think Lockhart needs to do in the second half to, to you know, overcome this deficit that we're in right now. But it's possible because the last two drives for the Lockhart Lions before the fumble ended, it ended with success with, uh, with touchdowns plus the two-point conversions on each one. So... We just need to get some stops on the defensive side, and if we can keep our offense rolling like we have been the last two drives, like I said, before that fumble, then we're, we're going to be looking in pretty good shape for the second half, especially since we get the ball to start the second half. Beavers will kick it off. It's just a little scrum kick, bounces. Detron Ellison from the 15. He gets hit. Oh, there's a flag. He gets hit down at the 15. A flag was thrown way back. Now, if it's against Bernie, I believe Lockhart will have at least one play. One time play. One time play. To be flat honest, if I was him, I would just take a knee. I would maybe even decline it and go into the locker room. So we're waiting to find out what's going on. I wonder what they're really talking about when they get in a circle like that. <laughs> well, you know, their weddings this weekend. What are you going to get them? <laughs> it is called on Bernie okay. Champion. Yeah, I know as a manager for uh, Lockhart Little League, I would go speak to my pitcher and, you know, I wouldn't even talk about what – you know, what's going on in the game. I walk up to one and told him, say, hey, you chewing bubble gum? He says, yes, coach. I said, what flavor is it? I don't know. It's gone. I said, well, spit it out and get to pitching. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to run a play. <laughs> there will be one play here in the first half. 32 to 16. There is no time on the clock as of right now. But because there was a defensive penalty, you do have to, well, you can run another play. Yes. Now it's going to be up to – you know, what kind of plays? We got four Chargers that are back deep standing at the their own 47, 48-yard well, line. let Detron run it, and then he hurdles one of them. Here comes Detron around the right side. Who will he hurdle this time? He's going to run out to the 40, down the 45. He's finally brought down, and that will end your first half. A nice run by Detron Ellison. Yes. But do we have another penalty? I don't think so. Oh, it was holding on us. That's going to be declined, and so that play just didn't even happen. And that will end your first half. So we go to halftime with Bernie Champion Chargers, 32, your Lockhart Lions, 16. We're going to uh, go to the halftime show of your Roaring Lions band here, but we'll probably take one commercial break before they get started. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Johnny & Sons Pain & Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain & Body, we won't steer you wrong. All right, and we are back here for the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Show. Uh, for the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop Halftime Show as we get ready to listen to the fine tunes and the sounds of the Lockhart Lion Roaring Band as they're coming out to the field right now. So once again, like I said, there's a Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop Halftime Show, and we're going to be turning off our mics and turning up the crowd mic so you can get ready to groove to some sweet sounds. And here is your Lockhart Line Roaring Band.
Junior Lieutenant Precious Garcia. Junior Lieutenant Rihanna Gonzalez. Social Officer Chelsea Rodriguez. Social Officer Bella Hunter. This week, the Lionels will be performing on the jazz routine with two conferences.
Probably. Johnny and Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. And we are back here at Bernie ISD Stadium as uh, Bernie Champion Chargers lead your Lockhart Lions 32 to 16 here at at the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show. And to go through the rest of the scores, here's the Meitler Storage game break. At halftime, it is Tyvee Antlers at Uvalde, 28-14. Alamo Heights at San Antonio Memorial. At halftime, it is 35 to nothing. Last night, Medina Valley pounded the Kennedy Rockets 42-17 to in San Antonio. And like I said, once again tonight here at uh, Bernie Isley Stadium is there a Bernie Champion Chargers 32 and your car, your law cart line 16 here at halftime. Some halftime stats that I got for you right now. As a team, law cart lines has 142 yards rushing on 17 carries, while Jackie Edwards has 36 yards passing on three com on four completions. Oh, excuse me, five completions off of nine attempts. You know, nine attempts, it, it's a lot of passing attempts that Lockhart has had here in the first half. You know, usually you don't get nine attempts in three games. And uh, it's one of the things that Coach Herman <coughs> spoke about, that uh, there's going to be some wrinkles here in today's game. And we've seen it already as the very first play for the Lockhart Lions. It was a long pass. Unfortunately, it was mistimed by uh, Daytron Ellison, or else it, it, it would have been a huge gain. But as far as uh, Russian stats for tonight, the leaders for Russian is uh, Daytron Ellison on 10 carries for 102 yards and has one touchdown on a 41-yard scamper to give the Lockhart Lions their first points of the night. Or their second points of the night, I'm sorry. And uh, right behind Daytron Ellison is his uh, older brother, Daquan Ellison, has 37 carries on four yards, and he's had a rough night tonight, as well as Jesus Aldana, who's only carried the ball twice for just two yards. But as a team, they're at 142 yards with 17 carries. And, uh, you know, it's been a rough night for Daquan and Jesus Aldana. Only running back been able to find success is uh, is uh, Daytron Ellison. So, you know, as we go ahead into the second half, we look back at the first half. And, you know, Scott, it's, you know, L Bernie Chapman is what Coach Herman talked about. They're, they're fast. They're physical. And it's going to take more than just one defender, Lockhart Line, to take the take these guys down, and it's shown. And then you throw in there Luke Boyers with this tremendous athletic ability as a quarterback to open up the running running game for Jenkins, who's had a good night so far here in the first half. He's been in and out with a couple of injuries that he had during the during the first half. But you know, all in all, Lockhart is not where they want to be at, but they're at a point to where they could still strike, especially since they get the ball back first to start the second half and you know quick points on the board makes this an even closer game and you know it's just going to come down to Lockhart Lions defense stopping this Bernie offense this Bernie cha champion offense to give the ball back to the Lions and you know only miscues for the Lions is of course they had that one fumble which gave the champion Chargers the ball deep in line territory and they were able to just get on the board just before halftime so it's going to be a tough hill to climb but it's one that I'm pretty sure the coaches are in the locker room talking about it and uh, making their, their adjustments on the defense side of the ball as well as the offensive side. Yeah, well, the thing I'm seeing, you know, I, I was listening to you talk about the stats and the number of carries and then Jackie's passing. And if my math is right, and I'm pretty sure it is, if we've thrown nine passes and we've ran 17 times, we're almost – throwing 50% of the time tonight, and we haven't had the ball that much tonight. So, honestly, our running backs don't have much because we've thrown the ball a lot tonight. Right. And if some of those passes would have hit the receivers, this would be a different game. There's a lot of what-ifs, but we're still only two touchdowns down. If we take the opening kick and we drive down the field score, and I'm sure we'll go for two, it's an eight-point ball game. 
So Definitely. this game is far from over. But like you said, hitting the nail on the head and beating a dead horse, if we don't stop Bernie Champion's offense – We'll never get back in this game because right now we're too far behind to just be exchanging touchdowns. So this is a great offense. Last year they lit us up. We started out the game last year really well with them, held them under check, held them in check, and then all of a sudden they just blew us out at the end. And 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 uh, but again, guys, you got to remember Jackie Edwards is a sophomore starting in his third game as a varsity quarterback. And to be quite honest. He gives us that dimension of passing we have not had. We had a passing quarterback kind of in Logan Brown last year, but with Jackie back there as a sophomore, we become more of a threat passing yes. because not only – and again, you know, you hate putting professional athlete tag names on somebody. Randall Cunningham in his prime. Michael Vick. That's what we have as a quarterback. The kid can throw – but he's also a great runner. We still haven't seen Jackie get to the outside and run with the ball. Exactly. He's fast. So, But when you have the Ellisons, you have Jackie, you have Aldonia, for us, a nice little run around the corner, and we've, we've, it's just like we passed the football. We're so fast on offense that we can get back into this game. This game is not over, by any, but you hit it on the head if we don't stop their offense, it's going to be a long night because they're they're high-powered and they're running all the time. Yes, definitely. And here's an alarming stat. In the first half, Bernie Champion ran 41 plays while Lockhart Lions have ran 26. Now, this is a stat right here that if the Lockhart Lions are going to have a, have a chance to get back into this ball game and come out with a victory tonight, those numbers have to flip-flop. But at the same time, Bernie <laughs> Champion could have 26 plays and with the high power offense they got, they could score three, four times off of 26 plays. Yes, they could. So, you know, even though we like to switch that around and have Lockhart have the most snaps in the second half, they have to come out with points as well. And with those points, the defense has to keep the Bernie Champion Chargers out of the end zone and uh, force them to punt on fourth and long. Because as we've seen, they're not shy to go down, to go fourth, you know, on fourth down, especially in their own territory. So, you know, it's, it's going to be, as we say, it's going to be an interesting second half because things could switch from one way to the <coughs> other. You know, if Lockhart can't stop the offense of the champion Chargers and they keep scoring, it could get to worse. It could get worse really quick. Well, and but if they come back out, they're making an exciting game and uh, give themselves a shot to, to win this contest or even make it a, a, you know, a close contest to where they could still come out with a victory at the end of the game. You know, it's, it's going to be a big plus for the Lockhart Lions as we move forward. But definitely, they need Lockhart Lions going to need to stop, score points, and uh, come out tonight with a victory. Well, and you're looking at the stats again. You don't want that same play total because if our defense is out there for 82 plays tonight, this score is going to get ugly. We have got to stop, like you said, got to stop them. And then our offense has to do something with it when they get the ball because if they don't take some time off the clock and give their defense a rest – it can get it's going to get ugly but yes. if we come out score make this an 8 point game it's totally different it's a total different match and now we're back in the ball game we can do that we have a very capable offense i think we're starting to figure out their offense i'm hoping the second half we're going to see us a pretty tight contest and i'm hoping at the end of the game it's going to be like all the other games it's going to come down to the last play of the game yes definitely. so that's the kind of team we have that's, and the thing is, like you said, our defense is fast. They hit hard. They just they got to figure these guys out. And if they do, again, I really believe with our offense that we can turn this around and make a game out of it. Yes, and one of the biggest things that's hurt the Lockhart Lions defense is they're letting the receivers get behind the safeties. The safeties got to keep their receivers in front of them. You know, unfortunate enough, uh, was a young gentleman's name that dropped Beavers. two passes. Beavers dropped two passes, and then when they had another receiver that dropped one, they were both all all three of those drops they were wide open, you know, receivers at the time and behind the safeties. So, and you know, Bernie Champion, they have these little short dinks here and there, but Lockhart Lions, the cornerbacks are playing so far back, they're allowing them to get five yards up the field and and uh, making the easy catch, and it's just a quick four or five yard run from there for another first down. So. You know, it's 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 going to be a, a test for the Lockhart Lions defense. It's going to even be a 
uh, you know, it's going to be a test for the Lockhart Lions offense to figure out that defense to get more yards and more points. But it's going to be even a bigger test for this Lockhart Lions defense to stop this high-powered offense. And they've done it twice already. Out of the six drives that uh, Bernie Chapman has had, you know, they stopped them twice. But then again, they've scored on the other drives that they've had. So it's going to be a it's going to be a big second half. It's got to be a big second half for the Lockhart Lions, and they got to make the stops defensively, and they got to continue to pound the ball and get that ball into the end zone for the offense, and you know, come out of Bernie Champion with the with the victory. Well, and you know, defensively, I can't even tell you one player right now that I would vote for defensive player of the game because no one's really stood out yet. But on offense, you know, it's kind of we got a, a one out there that's about 800 yards ahead of everybody. Yeah. But, again, we have a whole second half. Something I want to switch away from the game real quick because we're about two and a half minutes away from the kickoff of the second half. Tuesday night, if you can be in the gym and still want to listen to us, feel free to do so. But Tuesday night, the Lady Lions of Lockhart, who I might add won the third game, and they so they won tonight. They are now ten and one in district play. Their only team they've lost to has been Dripping Springs. Well, Dripping Springs is coming to town Tuesday night. I would say get a phone with an earpiece or something. Get to the game so you can watch our girls play live. If you have not seen our volleyball team play, you're missing out. And the best thing about Tuesday night, they're playing one of the best teams in Central Texas at home. And it would be nice to have a big crowd yelling for those girls because there's a tremendous amount of talent on that team. Coach Bothy has them playing very well right now. And uh, playoffs, are it's a done deal. We're in the playoffs as the number two seed. If we win Tuesday night, now we, ha- we may be the number one seed. It just depends on how they do tiebreakers there. Yeah. But, um, but Tuesday night, 6.30 is when the game starts. We'll go live at 6 p.m. Tuesday night. If you can't make it to the game, listen to it Tuesday night because all of us will be there. And then if you can make it to the game, bring something to listen to it with. And if you don't even want to listen to us, that's fine. But if you can't make it to the game, that is going to be the game of the year for girls volleyball at home. So come help them out. Yes, definitely. And we had uh, Coach Bolte up for an interview a couple of, a few weeks back. And, you know, one of the biggest quick things that I liked – is uh, when I, I you know, I kind of like put her on the spot because she didn't expect this question. I asked her to describe the varsity volleyball team by using one word. And she thought about it, and the word that came up was heart. You know, and that's what these young ladies have brought to the table, you know, for the Lion, Lady Lions volleyball team. And, you know, Coach Bothy has been a huge, huge, and has made a huge impact on these young ladies. And it's shown. They're 10-1 in district. Their only loss is against the top-ranked, uh, Dripping Springs volleyball team, but now they got Dripping Springs at home, so it, it's it's you got the home crowd, home you know home crowd on your side, you know that's why let's get this this gym filled to the rim to where you know you you're gonna have people standing on either side because there's nowhere to sit down, but definitely get out there to the game on Tuesday night, support these young ladies, like Scott said, they're they're in the playoffs, but they still got a district title that they could still be out there fighting for. And uh, you know, and it starts with uh, hopefully a win over Dripping Springs this Tuesday night. So, well, you know, and just I'm going. I don't have their roster in front of me. Just the girls that I recall and what they did last Friday when McKelty and I were there. Um, you've got two girls, and I, I'm going to make a, a height up because I really don't think I'm even cl- close to the height. But you got Carla Cadillo, Rudy Cadillo's daughter. He gives us scores all the time. She might be five foot two. I'm I'm thinking maybe five foot two, but she covers that gym like she's six foot six, and she's all over the place, uh, diving for the ball, kind of the spark plug on the team. Then you got Callie Krenz, who is five three, plays like she's six four, and she's quite a hitter. But she's back there with Carly digging up the balls. You've got Sydney Shaw at the net, blocking everything. Um, just numerous girls that are giving. Their, their heart out here and there. And then, you know, the playmakers, Abby Ruggio. I mean, Abby Ruggio is putting up stats that are ungodly right now. Her jump serve is really good. Um, she, too, is a setter. She's a hitter. She can do it all. And she's quite an athlete to watch. And that's just 
part of them. I mean, there are at least eight to ten girls that can get out on that court and give us something. So, again, this is a very athletic team. Coach Bothy's got them going well. Uh, get out there and support them. We're, the boys are back on the field uh, for Lockhart. I'm sure Bernie Champion will be out pretty soon. And then we'll get the second half underway. We're going to take a break here and get us the commercials. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Two Bright Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is the end of the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show as we get ready for the second half kickoff as the Lockhart Lions will be receiving the ball to start the second half. And uh, stay, stay tuned with us after the game for the first Lockhart National Bank postgame show as uh, Scott and I will bring to you the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game as well as the Farm Bureau Defensive Player of the Game. And, you know, like you said, right now it's, it's you know, it's – a group effort as it is for the defensive side. We haven't had one player, you know, s stand out more than the than the than everybody else. But we still got another half to play, and that possibly could be taking place here in this second half, based on how well this Lock Hart Lions defense is going to come out against this char this Charger offense. So, all right. Well, we're going to have to get back in our standing positions because it's kind of an awkward booth to <laughs> sit and see <laughs> the entire game. But we are very close to the midfield stripe, so that's always nice. And McKelty's having a hard time trying to look at the scoreboard. <laughs> well, she's not short, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to see through the walls. It really is. Yeah. Um, so the teams are lining up. I'm watching it on TV here at the scoreboard, the big Mega Dome, Megatron, whatever the thing's called. Uh, the dynamic duo are the deep receivers. They've changed things up. They're going to go to Daquan Ellison. He'll let it bounce. It'll go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So Lockhart will get the ball to start the second half at their own 25-yard line. Now, Lockhart did have some success on their last, I say, well, not the, the last three drives. I say the two drives before that last one where they had the fumble to where they had scoring drives on each of those two possessions. Of course, one of them was a one-yard touchdown run by Jackie Edwards, and the second one was a 41-yard run for Daytron Ellison, who ran it up the middle and then bounced through the outside and scored a touchdown as we get set to go. Tight formation. He's going to hand it off. It's Aldonia around the left side. He's out to the 30-yard line. A great run by Aldonia to start things off, and Aldonia's talking, and we need him to stop. <laughs> Almost looked like he got horse-collared is, is what he was looking at. So it get, he gets it out to the – they're going to mark it at the 29. I thought he got to the 30. But the 29-yard line, so it'll be second and six. And now there is a timeout for Bernie Champion. That's not real good to start out the second half using a timeout. Hopefully, hopefully, they will have put it in cruise control and they're not mentally into the game right now. We can bounce one out on them. Definitely. You know, and, and to take a, a timeout this quick, this early in the second half, you know, if this game turns like the way we hope it would turn and Lockhart Lions get out there, get a couple of scoring drives and a couple of stops, you know, is that ho is that timeout going to come back and uh, bite them later on in the game? That is, I'm trying to see what McKelty's doing. That's quite ingenious there. <laughs> We're learning all kinds of things from our, our senior high school student here with seeing getting a closer view of the game. i got to get a picture of this. Stand right there. So here we go with second and six. It will be a tight <laughs> formation for Lockhart. They're going to pitch it out to Daquan Ellison around the right side. He can't. Oh, he does bounce it to the outside. He gets out just across the 31-yard line. They did a good job of stringing it out. So he's going to gain about a yard. Daytron was trying to get him a crease, but the guy was blowing that block up. It looked like they're going to stop him for no gain right there. It almost looked like he picked up a yard or two. 
And the, well, yeah, yards all they gave him. I I honestly thought he got across the 30, but again, a yards a yard, I guess. Third and five is where we're at. And waiting for a oh, they're waiting for a receiver to get out there. So we're down to eight on the play clock. We're probably gonna have to call timeout. And Man, they that's do. what gonna, that's what's gonna happen. They gotta call the timeout. So each mm. team has basically blown a timeout right. here early in the third quarter. So now of, everything's yeah. back to even with two to two. A little bit of some miscommunication right there as we had a receiver coming in late. And uh, like Scott mentioned, we were out right around the eight second mark of the play clock before the receiver finally got out there. And, you know, unfortunately, Lockhart has to take a timeout. But I think in this moment, it's a good. it was a good timeout because had they tried to run the play and got called for a delay of game penalty, it will set them back at third down and ten is – instead of uh, third and five, what we're looking at right now. Okay, McKelty, we're putting you on the spot. There, there was a boy band recently, and the girls loved them, and they had a perfume. What was that boy band? Probably One Direction. One Direction. That is correct. That is correct. And you win nothing. I love them, too. Well, uh, <laughs> the reason is my wife is asking about my daughter who likes that band. Oh. And so McKelty says One Direction, dear. Okay, we're now at third and five, and Edwards is going to roll out, throws it to Daytron, but I don't think he held on to it. Nope, it was a nice try. They rolled it out, but Daytron Ellison couldn't catch it. It was thrown a little bit low, so that's incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Again, we're kind of at that gambling stage. You just got to kind of go for their throat, but they're going to punt. And we got Daytron Ellison back there. And that is set the punt. And, you know, that's got to put thoughts in the minds of uh, the Bernie Champion coaching staff. I'm going to well. put my, my neck out on the line saying we have the fastest punter in high school football <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> Here's the snap. It's over his head. That's trouble. He picks it up at the one yard line, punts it out. He did a great job of getting it out there. And it's, but it's not going to be much of a punt. But you got to keep in mind, he just kicked about a 30-some yard punt with four guys getting ready to kill him. Yes, definitely. So it's going to be first and 10 for Bernie Champion at the 36-yard line. So, you know, things just aren't going well right now for Lockhart. So here we talk. They got to get a stop. And if you're going to get one, you better get one now because if they score again, it's going to be tough to come back. Is that last drive for the Lions took only 50 seconds off the clock. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Jenkins in the backfield, Boyer's at quarterback. He's going to roll out left. He's looking. He throws. Nice catch. Beavers with it. He'll get the first down and gets down to about the 22-yard line. And, you know, I know they got a lot of receivers, but Beavers is the one you really got to keep an eye on. And he's like, like I say, he's like Jerry Rice. The fact that he's dropped two passes tonight is like – miraculous yes three receivers to the right one to the left gonna throw again this time he's looking to the right swings it out to beavers again he catches it at the 32 takes it down to the 25 where he's brought down at the 24 yard line and i'm waiting to see who that is that was eddie two car on the tackle and eddie two car kind of manhandled him there yeah great open field tackle right there and so that's one of those things that lockhart needs at this point as it is going to be second down and 10 for the chargers Two receivers right, to the left. Hand off Jenkins up the middle. He gets down to the 20 where he is stopped. And I want to say Alex Sosa and maybe Hernandez. No, you know, it was two car and Hernandez on that tackle. So third and five. Third and four maybe. Now nah, we're going to go with five. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Jenkins again to the right side. He's around to the 20. He's going to cut back up to the 15. He's down to about the 11-yard line where he was tackled by number 75, Gonzalez. And it looked like Tukar was in there again and even a little help from Caleb Jennings. Great cutback by Jenkins right there to get past the first down marker and po more positive yardage down to the 11-yard line. So they got two receivers to the left, one to the right. A miscommunication, Jenkins with the ball. He's in trouble. Spin move. He ain't going anywhere. As a matter of fact, he lost a yard. Two car in there on the tackle with Sosa. And again, Gonzalez was in there. 
So Gonzalez must have heard us and Tukar must have heard us because they're trying to become defensive players of the game. Looks like there's going to be a two-yard loss on that run right there and definitely a miscommunication on the handoff between Boyers and Jenkins. Twin receivers on each side. He's looking to throw. He's in trouble. He cuts. He gets away from one. He gets away from two. He's inside the ten. Cuts it up where he is stopped by Devin Clark at the eight-yard line. Short of the first down, but a great run. They're stopping the clock. So it's going to be third down, and they need to get to the one-yard line for a first and ten. So they'll send two receivers to the left. They have one on the right. Nope, they have two on the right. They're going to be in shotgun with Jenkins in the backfield. Jenkins has had a nice night running the ball. One receiver to the left. They're looking to the left. They're going to throw over the middle, and it's low. Underthrown. So it's incomplete as he was looking for number eight, and that is Sam Gray. He was about two yards short on that, bringing up fourth down. With the kicker they have, you would think they're going to kick an extra or a field goal here, and they will. Beavers is quite a kicker. Like I said, if I remember right last year, they kicked an onside kick, and he's the one that recovered it because he was the kicker. That's yes, definitely. Three points that the Lions give up here has got to be something positive for them instead of letting them get into the end zone. 25-yard field goal is good. So Beavers hits the 25-yard field goal with 8.43 to go in the third quarter. We're going to take a break here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at BISD Stadium here in Bernie, Texas, where it is 35 to 16. And like Emilio said, that was a positive thing for them to have to kick the field goal. So we're 19 points down. We're not out of the game yet, but we do have to answer very quick if we want to stay in it. The dynamic duo are back to receive, both of them standing at the 15-yard line. You know, it's a different kick return formation that Lockhart Lions have right now. Is uh, they usually have two deep and two set up right there where the dynamic duos are standing at at the moment, but they got nine players up here at the front. There's the kick. Daytron Ellison's going back, gets it at the five yard line. He's going to cut to the right. He's got a break free, and he's going to get up to about the 17-yard line. Not a bad return. Good coverage by Bernie Champion. Thanks. So we are first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Now, if the Lockhart Lions offense is going to make something happen, they got to make it happen now on this drive. So we had the... Uh, Concession stand deliver or uh, here just a little bit ago as Emilio will be enjoying some stuff. <laughs> we have two receivers out to the left, and that is uh, Alex Thompson and Daytron Ellison. They're going up the middle, and there's nothing there, absolutely nothing. And they went to Daquan Ellison, so nothing up the middle. <clears throat> and normally when we play these stronger teams, we have a hard time running up the middle. They're going to give them one yard on the run right there. Second and nine. But still something, you know, Lockhart's usually averaging about four to five yards of carry. They're going to roll out right with Jackie Edwards. He's looking. He's going to run the football, trips up. He gets across to about the 21-yard line. That's exactly where they're going to spot him, the 21-yard line. He actually tripped, or he might have been able to pick up the first down. 
You know, great great awareness by Jackie Edwards as he saw that his receivers were covered. And, uh, you know, as a sophomore to make the decision to tuck the ball and run, that's, uh, it just goes to show the knowledge that Jackie Edwards has as a quarterback for the Lockhart Lions and not force anything when he doesn't have to. Third and seven. They're going to give it to Daytron Ellison. He gets tripped up in the backfield, and that's nothing doing there. He lost yardage. It's going to be about fourth and nine. 7.20 and counting here in the third quarter, 35-16. to 16, Bernie Champion on top. They're going to bring out the punt team. Very unfortunate that uh, – well, great play by, for one by the Charger defensive uh, lineman to be able to get down there and trip up Daytron Ellison. Had he not done that, Daytron <coughs> had, some yard, had some room to get the first down and possibly even more. That's true. So number 12 is going to be back to receive. That is Kyle Hill. The snap is good. The punt – is not bad. Hill's going to fair catch it at the 48-yard line. So it'll be first and 10. Bernie Champion at the Lockhart 48-yard line. A little John going on out there. 6.44 to go here in the third quarter, 35-16. to 16. Bernie Champion on top. So they'll have two receivers on the right, two on the left. It looks like Jenkins is in the backfield again with Boyers, who's had a great game, and this kid just a junior. He's got a rifle for now. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if maybe he's a shortstop in baseball or something because the <laughs> kid can throw a rifle on the run. Fake a handoff. They pitch it out to Beavers on the left side. He's around the corner down to the 40, close to the first down marker. We'll see where they spot him. Gets it down to the 39-yard line of Lockhart. Going to be a yard shy, maybe right at a yard shy. Yeah, Caleb Jennings was there to knock him out of bounds just short of the first down. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left. Jenkins in the backfield with Boyers. <laughs> They're going to fake the handoff, give it to Beavers again. Beavers to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25, gets tripped up by, oh, and he's gimping a little bit on that one. It was Alex Thompson with a great tackle. And, uh, you know, Boyers is tough because he got hit right around the knees and he gimped a little bit, but he looks like he's fine. First and 10, balls at the 23-yard line. One, uh, two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back up there in the front. Boyers gets the snap, hands it off. No, he doesn't. He hangs on to it. He throws it to his H back, and he's down inside the 10 to the 8. That is number 15, Reed got Cantrell, the sophomore. Right around the 21-yard line on the near sideline. So that's the second time when they've had an H-back that they've thrown to the H-back over the middle. And that's Reed Cantrell who's had a nice Actually, night. there's two flags, one on either side of the line. Procedure on Bernie Champion. So they'll move that back five. That helps just a little bit. The ball is now at the 28-yard line of Lockhart. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. I always like it when they put these big signs up because I don't even <laughs> think they – I honestly don't think they use them. I think it's just a decoy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to hand it off to Jenkins in the middle. He gets it up to the side, 25 to the 20. He's out, outside to the 15, dives forward. And it looks like he got inside the 15-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. They're going to say he went down at the 15-yard line, and we got a Lockhart player down. And we don't want that one to be down, as that's Eddie Tukar, but he hops back up. He will have to leave the, the field for a play. That is one player we cannot afford to have off the field. If you're not going to eat that, I will. <laughs> I'm trying to get some chews in between. All right. <laughs> yeah, but definitely that's, so, a, that's a, a, lineman, a, a linebacker we don't need out of the game at Eddie Tukar because his presence on the defense is felt when he's in. 
Well, McKelty can take over if you want to. <laughs> Receiver to the left, two to the right. H back, watch him. And he's going to keep it. Boyers is. He's up the middle. He's inside to the five, down to the three, down maybe to the two. Boyers, that was just a quarterback draw. Took it straight up the middle, and he's got a first and goal down at the three-yard line. So things are getting worse here with 5-12 to go in the third quarter as it looks like. Bernie Champion knocking on the door again. And they're going to bring in a new player. This is number 49. That is Nicholas Elam is in as a tight end. And I don't know. I just have this crazy feeling they're going to look at Elam as for the throw. He's going to give it to Jenkins instead, make me wrong. And he scores from three yards out. So Jenkins scores with 4.51 to go into third quarter. That's going to make it 41-16 to 16 in favor of Bernie Champion. Yeah, right out the gate, Bernie Champion scores 10 points to start the second half and uh, puts Lockhart Lions into a deeper hole as it's 41-16 to 16 as we wait the extra point try by Beavers, who was limping a while ago after a hard hit. Beavers with the kick, and it is right through the upright, so that will make it 42-16. to 16. Bernie Champion over the Lockhart Lions with 4.51 left to go here in this third quarter, and uh, we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through White Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at BISD Stadium. 4.51 to go here in the third quarter, 42-16. to 16. Bernie Champion on top. It's a di deep hole that we're going to have to dig ourselves out of. But, again, there's really no answer to this offense, of stopping this offense. We've stopped them a couple times, but they have so many weapons. Yes, they definitely do, and it showed so far here to start off the second quarter. And, uh, you know, it's, there's only so much you could ask of the defense, but the offense has to step it up and uh, move this ball down the field. The dynamic duo are back. They're going to give a short kick this time. Daquan Ellison picks it up at the 16. He's out to the 20, to the 23, and he's up ended at the 25. A good return from Daquan Ellison. Going to get it first and 10 at the 25-yard line to start this drive. 4.45 to go here in the third quarter. For those of you folks back in Lockhart, make sure if you see a maroon SS Monte Carlo that you are off the street as my uh, <laughs> son is now driving officially. Just want to give that warning out. Tight formation. Edwards throws the interception, and they're going to bring it back to the 30, down to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, down to the 10. A nice interception, but it was basically thrown right to him. But I haven't yet seen the number of the guy who got it. 24. So who? let's see who that was. Of course, I don't have my glasses on. That's Kyle Bowman Sr. who intercepted that one. And to be honest, it was right to him. I mean, yes, our, our receiver wasn't even looking at the ball. <clears throat> Defender just, just stepped right in front, and the ball was thrown right to him. And Jack Edwards never saw him, and nice return. Sets the charges up in a nice spot back in deep in line territory at the 10-yard line. First and goal to go from the 10. Yep. So two receive, or one receiver to the left, two to the right. He's looking to the left. He's going to throw to Beavers, or not Beavers. That was number seven. That is actually Brock Burton, the, the senior wide receiver. That will make it second and goal from the 10. It was just a missed, missed thrown right there by uh, Boyers. That, you know, receiver was wide open for a touchdown and just overthrown. So we got an H back again. Watch for him coming across the middle. Single receiver to the left, two to the right. They're going to hand it. Oh, no, yeah, they do. They do bounce it out. Running. Oh, there's flags all over the place as he gets down to about the 
seven-yard line, but I have a feeling this one's coming back. Yes, they got two flags, one over the right, one right around the 15, and then the right, main referee threw it at the 19. That's a hold. Christian Vargas was the one on the carry. It's going to move the ball back 10 yards. So, what, second a goal from the 20. 4.23 to go here in the third quarter. It is 42-16, to 16, Bernie Champion on top. We still have an entire fourth quarter to go, so don't count us out just yet, but we got to pick, get a pick six, get a turnover or something right here. They're going to look to the right. No, they're going back to the left over the middle. It's Burton, wide open, touchdown, 20-yard touchdown strike with 4.13 to go here in the third quarter. That's Brock Burton's second touchdown. His first touchdown was a 19-yard variety. This one is a 20-yard variety. Uh, so it makes the score 48-16 to 16 with 4.13 left to go here in the third quarter. And the snap is back. The hold is down. And Beavers kicks the ball right to the uprights. It's going to make the score now 49 Chargers, 16 Lockhart Lions with 4.13 left to go. And we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Through Bright Magazine. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. So we're, we're here in third quarter at 4.13 to go. It's 49 to 16. Now if you're thinking the way of Bernie Champion, in all kinds and purposes, this game's over. So now do you try to save some of your key players and let them finish the third quarter and then maybe put some of your backups in in the fourth quarter just to preserve your players? It's definitely because, you know, Bernie Champion does have an explosive unit out there. And uh, – you know, with the games coming up, we still got some more, you know, about four more district games after this. And they still got the likes of Alamo Heights and, um, you know, that they have to face. So it's it just depends on what the coaching staff wants to do because, you know, you don't want to give these guys out of sync and uh, bring Lockhart, you know, give Lockhart a chance to come back. But our hope is they would. A deep kick into the end zone. We're not bringing that one back. So we'll get it first and 10 at the 25-yard line. 4-13 to go here in the third quarter. <clears throat> Again, the girls' volleyball team, the JV won in two, set, or two matches. The, uh, J, uh, the freshman won in two matches. The JV won in two matches. And the varsity won three to nothing in theirs. And the varsity girls will be at home Tuesday night against Dripping Springs. Fill the, uh, the gymnasium. If you don't want to fill the gymnasium, uh, or if you can't fill the gymnasium, listen here as we'll go um, pregame at 6 o'clock. The game starts at 6.30. The top two teams in the district will go head-to-head. To head. Daquan Ellison gets it to the right side. He's in trouble right now, and he's not going to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I think he lost about four yards. More John going on out there. Daquan Ellison is chasing after the guy talking. So that's one thing we got to be careful of is someone getting in trouble with their mouth on the field. <clears throat> Second and 12. So they'll have uh, two receivers coming out to the left side, and that being Alex Thompson and Datron Ellison. And here we go around the right side with Daytron Ellison. He breaks free from the 30 out to the 35 where he's close to a first and 10. Great job there by the Lions. I may have to go see if they have another water over there. <laughs> I, can, I can feel uh, the voice. Let me, let me send my runner. Our bodyguard. Water? Water? <laughs> So, Solero will bring his team to the line. It's a tight formation. Oh, they jumped. That was easy to see. That was easy to see. So, first and 15. 
Yeah, it's definitely something that where yards is, has been tough to come for the Lockhart Lions offense. To move them back five yards, and you know, it just puts a little bit more pressure on this offense to get five extra more yards to get a first down at where, where it's now first down and 15 at their own 30. I want to thank Alex. He just saved the day. <laughs> Alexander the Great. <laughs> we have a receiver out to the right side. They're going to pitch it out. Aldana does a good job of picking up the bad pitch. He'll get close to the original line of scrimmage, picks up about four, making it second and 11. It was a bad pitch, and Aldana did a great job of catching it on the bounce. Yes, definitely. It was one of the fortunate bounces to where it, you know, I like to call it the magnet bounce, where it came out of his hands and went right back to it. So second and 11 here. 215 and counting here in the third quarter. They give it to Daytron. Daytron gets stacked up quickly. So we lose about a yard. Yes, and that play right there was was you know in large part for the champion defense as Daytron Ellison ran into the back of the lineman who got pushed backwards and that's that play was similar to the one that he scored the 41 yard touchdown run on during the second quarter. So we have two receivers to the right. The Jackie's going to roll out to his right. He's looking deep. He's got a man open, which was Moya, Moya and it was over the top of his head. So that will make it third and 11 with a uh, minute 36 to go here. It'll, or I'll check It'll that. It'll be fourth, fourth and 11. 11. You know, that's just another pass where Jackie Edwards didn't set his feet and throwing on the run and overthrowing his uh, receiver. He had Rich Moya. Just overthrew him. And we know that Moya can catch because he made that spectacular diving catch at a home game. Yes, I believe it was against uh, Travis Rebels, the yes, first game was. of the season. Yes, yes, it was. So we have one receiver on the right side. Man Lions in motion. going for it. Pitches it. Oh, they're going to go with Daytron Ellison throwing it deep to Cortland. And it's thrown interception. Here comes Hill the other way. He's to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, down to the 30, where he's knocked down at the 30-yard line by, who was that, 71? Yes, 71. it was. That was Hernandez, Andreas Hernandez with a great tackle. But not until that was the punt returner right there and Kyle Hill with the interception. And that's the second time Daytron's been way short on the pass. Yes. This time it was picked off. Second pickoff of the night. First and 10 for Bernie Champion at Lockhart's 30-yard line. They're going to fake a handoff. Looking to the right side is complete. They hit number 15. That is Reed Cantrell. And we're not even in the fourth quarter, and we have a new quarterback. That is Jordan. And i got to check this last name out. Jordan. Higher Holzer? High Holzer. High Holzer. High Holzer, the quarterback. The quarterback now. And in the backfield, we have number 35. That's Lang. Lang, or Holzer is running with it. And Hernandez brings him down to the 20. A nice run there. He's not as fast as the other quarterback, but he's got a good read of the field. Right, definitely. And it. <clears throat> High Holzer. High Holzer. High Holzer. I, found, I yeah. heard it. <laughs> and if they don't know their own kids. So third and one. And he's going to run again. He gets to the 20. And that's as far as he gets. Maybe inside the 20. Definitely. You know, it, definitely a missed call because one of the defenders for the Lockhart Lions got pushed from behind as he was trying to make the tackle and just uh, – wasn't seen by the referee, so. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the fourth quarter where it is the end of the third here. It's Bernie Champion Chargers 49, your Lockhart Lions 16. We will go to the fourth quarter. We'll take a break right here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports through White Magazine. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, KreitzMarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z Market.com. No sauce. 
no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at BISD Stadium. It's 49 to 16. We're getting ready to start the fourth quarter, and it is 10 o'clock, and this has been a long game tonight. I know it's been homecoming and everything, but we're 10 o'clock already, and it's still got a quarter to go. So they have decided to go with a lot of their backups now on offense. Looking out there, I don't see Beavers. Jenkins is done. Obviously, Boyers is done. Got a lot of new receivers. Yeah, of course, Beavers got got uh, got hurt a couple, you know, a couple of drives ago. So for them to take Beavers out, give him a rest, you know, to finish out the rest of the district season, you know, was a smart move by the coach staff. They're going to hand it off up the middle. That's Number 34, going to have to get the name in a minute. He gets it down to about the 10 where Eddie Tukar makes the tackle. That is Christian Vargas, the senior running back. So it looks like they'll be calling his number a lot here as we get, come to the tail end of the game here. And bear with us on the, uh, the names of the wide receivers because once you get those memorized, that's when they bring the other ones out. <laughs> so twin receivers to the left, one to the right. Alvarez up the middle, or Vargas, I'm sorry, up the middle, inside the five-yard line, down to the four. And pretty much it's been all Bernie Champion here in the second half. Yeah, definitely. They started off strong to start the first half and uh, didn't slow down here in the second half as they're knocking on the door once again for another for a potential touchdown. And we got a lot of our main guys out there, and this is kind of their backups running over the top of us. Here's Vargas. He breaks free to the one-yard line. He may have gotten in. Vargas does get in from four yards out. So with 11 minutes to go in the ball game, it's now going to be 55-16 to 16 as Vargas from four yards out. Looks like we're going to have another kicker as well also. It's number 35, Ethan Lane. So I guess maybe we're looking at the future right now of Bernie Champion. He gets blocked. I didn't catch to see which line got his paw up there, but that field goal was blocked, and it is no good. So with 11 minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter, it is Bernie Champion 55, Lockhart Lions 16. And... Uh, Scott, Lockhart really needs to get some points on the board because the next time Chargers score, it's going to be a run clock from there on out to the rest of the game. That, and that, that's true. I mean, we're, get, we're getting to that point. And, you know, we knew coming in, Bernie Champion being 0-2, playing at home, that, that is probably the worst scenario to play Bernie Champion you could come into because those guys were hungry. They had to win. They knew they had to win. Yeah. And, uh, and they've owned us since 2012. That's the last time we've beaten Bernie yes. Champion. So they had the confidence coming in in that pregame. McKelty and I were up here talking about it before the game. That was kind of intimidating watching that pregame. They were ready to play. Not that we weren't, but, you know, you you don't put Bernie Champion 0-3 in a district season probably ever. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, it helps Bernie a lot when Lockhart comes out and they have three straight drives where it's just three and outs. Yeah. And uh, with no points on the board and – you know, right away after three drives for Bernie Champion, you're down 18 to nothing. That's just because they missed the three extra point tries. So we or got two point conversions at that point. We got the dynamic duo back in front of Caleb Jennings. So here is the kick. It drops at the five. It's staying in bounds, and it bounces. That that'll help us. It bounces out of bounds, so we'll get some extra yardage out of the penalty there. So right now, you know, again, they've got a new kicker. They Basically, I would have to say this is either their JV or second team or both. And uh, so there's going to be – they're going to make some mistakes now. But the scary thing was how they moved the ball on us against our first group. Yes. So it'll be first and 10 at the 30-yard line for Lockhart. And now we've got different players in the game at different positions. They're going to hand it off to Noah. Noah's going to get some yards, just a few. So the sophomore touches the ball for the first time tonight, Noah Garcia. 
and he'll gain one. And he's limping. Baby Bull's brother Jordan Garcia is in the game as well, so the sophomores are in the backfield. Looks like I see George Renteria coming into yep. the huddle as well. I saw that as well. Another guy we interviewed, David Garcia, is on the field. There's a handoff to Garcia. He's up to the 35, to the 40, out to about the 43-yard line is uh, Garcia. So nice run by David Garcia. He moves the sticks. And Garcia coming up slow as well, too. And we got another guy down. And he, he's getting up, and he's, he's limping, but he's up. Andreas Hernandez is going to limp off the field. That's one of our seniors. we got to be hoping that he can come back. And Owen Lockhart's got to be thinking the same thing for the future. You know, this game's over. Start maybe saving some of your guys for the next game. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, next game doesn't get any easier as Alamo Heights comes into Lions Stadium to take on the Lions. Well, and not only that, we aren't out of the playoffs yet. Right. I mean, and we're still in it. So they're looking at Adam Romero, throws it over his head. They were trying to run the slant pattern, but number 42, i got to get the name, number 42, Jackson Poole did a good job of busting the slant route and forcing him to go deeper. Yes, definitely. And, you know, talking about next week's game against Alamo Heights there at Lions Stadium, you know, Alamo Heights is going to be coming in with a chip on their shoulder because the last time they traveled into at, to the Lions Stadium, they came out with a huge loss, which ended up being – getting themselves knocked out of the playoffs for that year. Okay, I'm going to have to see who carried the ball because I did not see the number. Who was that? That was number. I didn't catch it. I thought it was the guy. It was a lineman that they picked up. I didn't see who ran the ball. So it's going to be third and five. Again, with us, we got new players and trying to figure out who's in what positions and what numbers are where. They're going to hand it off around the right side. Oh, my goodness. David Garcia was hammered. He loses a yard. I almost want to say that that was Jordan Garcia that ran that last play. That will bring up fourth and about six. Yeah, it's definitely at a, at a time where you, you, you're going to want to go for it. So it is fourth and six. The ball is at the 48-yard line of Lockhart. 8.35 and counting. I doubt very seriously that, you know, Bernie's going to be looking to throw the ball anymore tonight. They're going to roll out with Jackie. He's going to loft the ball out to uh, Garcia, and he gets the first down. So David Garcia with a nice catch, and he moves the sticks for the second time in this series. Senior David Garcia, who we interviewed before the game, having a nice fourth quarter here. It is now first and 10 at the 44-yard line of Bernie Champion. Checking in is Rivera with the play. Fake the handoff, roll out left. He's going to throw. Oh, he was trying to hit Richard Moya, but it just went through his hands. And Jackie Edwards is going to hop back up. Yeah, he got hit pretty hard just as he released the ball. Second great pass, yeah, great yeah. pass under pressure, just in and out of the hands of uh, Richard Moyer Jr. We got a lot of sophomores out there. We talked about that the first game. We have a strong sophomore class, and they're getting to play right now. 7.45 and counting here in the fourth quarter. 55-16 is the score. Bernie Champion on top. They're going to go straight up the middle with the baby bull. Garcia around the left side to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Down to the 25, to the 20. Inside the 20. And there's a flag for a late hit, I guess. At about the 18-yard line is where he got. But they're calling a late hit, I believe. So Jordan Garcia with a nice run there. Well, we're going to put them half the distance to the goal line, where it's going to put them right around the nine-yard line. Yep. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Let's give Jordan the ball again see what happens. 
7.25 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Like to see the Lions get in the end zone one more time at least. He's going to roll out to pass. He's throwing to the back of the end zone. It's Cortland Zambrano. He makes the catch. Zambrano with a beautiful catch. His first varsity touchdown for senior Cortland Zambrano. What a pass by Jackie Edwards. He set his feet. He set his feet. Perfect yes. pass. Zambrano, great athlete, good hands, makes a great catch. So with 7.14 to go here in the fourth quarter, it's 55-22. The Lions, it looks like they're going to be going for uh, two as they're waiting. It's like they might have to burn a timeout. Yep, and that's what the Lions will do is they'll burn a timeout as they were not set for the extra point try. So, you know, I think it's safe to say, and again, this is nothing against Jaden Garza. But I think with Jackie at quarterback, we have a little bit better throwing option. And, I, and this is for three more three years. Yes. And this kid is a good thrower when he sets his feet. He's a smart kid. He's doing a good job for being in his third start of the year. And that was a beautiful pass. I mean, my goodness. Yes, it's just it's just a little mechanic issue that he must work with to set his feet and make the throw. As we've seen already that, you know, when he's on the run, he's overthrowing his his intended targets. And uh, on plays like this where he set his feet and just gave, gave, gave it a little touch pass in the corner. And uh, Corlin Zambrano comes down with his first touchdown of the season as a Lockhart line. Who is that kicking, though? Is that? Ponce, yep, yeah, that's, that's Eduardo Ponce. Ponce coming in for the extra point. Alex Sosa, the senior captain, will be holding. And it looks like Eddie Tukar with the snap. Tukar to Sosa, the kick, and it looks good. Yep. And it is. Eduardo Ponce. So with that, with 7.14 left to go into, in the contest tonight, it is champion Chargers 55, Lockhart Lions 23, and we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at BISD Stadium, Bernie Champion. The good, you know, the, I guess the good thing about it is, yeah, you're losing by 32 points, but you've put 23 on the board. You're passing the ball pretty well, having a sophomore quarterback. So um, Z uh, Zambrano with his first touchdown as a varsity player. Jackie Edwards, is that his second touchdown pass, I believe? I want to say third, his third touchdown, third touchdown, pass. touchdown pass. Yes. So we're starting to get a groove. We're playing a great football <clears throat> team, and you know, as you said, next Friday is the big test. That's a, that's probably the team, if not one of the best teams in our district. Yes. And then we still got you know, of course, after Alamo Heights, we got Kennedy Rockets, and then we come back home for Tyvee, and then we finish off the season at at the Honey Bowl there in uh, Uvalde, Texas. Are you sure that's in Texas? Because it seems like I, I, it's well, It's close, right on the edge, I guess. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here we go for our onside attempt. 7.14 to go, Seven, or 55-23. He hits a line drive at somebody, but nice job. That was an actual that nice play. That might be the shortstop right there. Trevor Smith, the ball hit him in the legs, and he dove right on top of it. Nice job. Because that was a good kick. It was. It, it went right at him. And uh, he was able to let it bounce off his chest and was right there to recover it just like a catcher. So we got two receivers to the right, one to the left. We're trying to eliminate all the, the guys that start. We only got looks like one guy left out there. The ball's handed off. He's going to run it out to about the 45-yard line where he's stuck. Nice play there by number four, and that is Cameron Jackson, the senior, making the tackle. And there he goes. Alex Sosa is heading off the field, so that pretty much puts all the rest of the guys or the backup players 
6.45 and counting, 55-23 here in the fourth quarter. And I've already forgotten High Holzer. Is that right? <laughs> High Holzer. High Holzer. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and the running back is, I want to say that's lying. And it is, and he's off to the right side. He's out to about the 48-yard line, maybe the 49. Or to be shy of a first down by a yard right at the, cent- at, at the midfield. Yep. Third down and a one. So the backup's getting some time here. I like to see that clock running. Snap. There's the handoff to uh, Lang. No, he fakes it. Nice fake. Good pass. Down to the 40 it goes. Down to the 36-yard line, and that was number 88. That is Cade Raya on the catch. Jared Galindo in with the tackle as well as number 51, Elias De La Cruz. And that was a first down moving the st- – oh, there's a penalty, so that didn't even count. That'll back it up, 10. First and 20, 5.55 to go here in the ball game. I guess if you like numbers, there's 78 points on the board. <laughs> Just like them switched around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't what I thought it was, so it's third and about six. Three, Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They have an H-back. Usually they'll throw to that H-back. Let's see what happens. They're going to throw it to the H-back right there. He is, and it's incomplete. Almost. Ah. That was number 12, Juan Ramirez didn't see the ball or he might have had a pick six. But there's that play again. When he H-backs up there, a lot of times they like to hit him over the middle, and that's exactly what they tried to do. Fourth down and six because we see uh, the punt team out for the second time of the night for uh, Bernie Champion. Beavers is on to kick, and it does look like a lot of their starters are back out on on the punt. But that's not Beavers punting. That's weird. Watch a fake. Nah, surely not. There's the punt. Not a terrible punt. Nice fair catch there at the 25-yard line by Jared Galindo, the senior. So they'll actually it's at the 26. So Lockhart will take over first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. 5.24 to go in the ball game. It's 55-23. Bernie Champion Chargers on top right now. And here come the the backups for Lockhart. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be a quarterback. I would. Well, Jackie Edwards is still out there because, oh, as is? we know, the backup quarterback for the Lions is Alex oh, Sosa. That, that's right. That's right. You know, I would almost make up a quarterback at yeah. this point. And right here, you know, just. Uh, a mental mistake for Jackie Edwards right there. He had two receivers on the far side with nobody on them. You know, no one's seen something like that, a quick count and a quick toss. We got two Lions running down the field for a touchdown right there. But Bernie Champion caught it before and was able to call a timeout. That's the second time this year that we've had guys out there with nobody on them. Yes, and, you know, the first time Jackie Edwards saw it and uh, just <laughs> – just overthrew the intended receiver, which was Devin Clark. And uh, Devin was wide open. Nobody was even near him for about 20 yards. And I think the ball was overthrown by about 20 yards on that, if I remember right. So here they go. They're going to hand it off straight up the middle. That's Noah Garcia again. He got a couple, some tough yards up the middle. Second and nine, 5.05 and counting. As Emilio said, we'll do the offensive and defensive players of the game after some commercials. And then while they're breaking it down, I get to call in the score. Tight formation. Handoff up the middle. Jordan Garcia. He gets dropped in the backfield. He's going to lose a yard on the play. So now third and 11.
Is that Adam Romero that's coming in with the play right now? Yep, that is him. You would like to think maybe they're going to throw to him. They're not going to throw to him at all. They give the looks like to Garcia. That was David Garcia variety, not the Jordan Garcia variety. Fourth and nine. 350 and counting here in the final quarter of play. This has got to be a uh, passing down right here. Gosh, you would think. There's the slant. Romero catches it, but he's going to be well short of the first down. Bernie Champion will take over. First down and 10, deep in line territory at the 33-yard line. I guess a good note, the slant pass was thrown right where it needed to be. But they were used to that play, and they saw it coming. Bad note, it only went for six yards. Yep. <laughs> so it'll be, as you said, first and 10, the ball will be at the 27-yard line of Lockhart. The backups versus the backups right now with 318 and counting, laying up the middle. He's bowling over the guys. He's inside the 20. They finally push him back. Not before he picks up enough yardage for a close to a first down. It'll be at the 19-yard line. Uh, number 51, that was Elias De La Cruz. With the, he was on the bottom of that pile. And then here comes Seth Smith, the sophomore. That's a big sophomore right there. Yeah, he is, and he, he's he's uh, made a big impact as a sophomore on the offensive line. Just, just going to need a little bit more experience there to become a better offensive lineman. And nice run again. Yeah. And that's just the thing about it. These sophomores that are playing in tonight's game, we still got them for two and a half more years. Yeah. Like Seth Smith, you know, I, I, Seth Smith is going to be – he's going to – he's going to – cause some havoc on that offensive line when it comes to facing the uh, defenses so it's you know it's just and now he's playing defense so this could be one of those guys that could do it on both sides of the, of the football so third and one two minutes 10 seconds to go laying in the backfield he gets it again oh no the quarterback with a nice fake Quarterback's going to run around the outside. He doesn't get out of bounds, but he does get the first down. So they'll move the sticks. Again, that's number six, Jordan Highholzer. Again, he's not as fast as the other quarterback, but he does read the field pretty well. Yes, he does. And an excellent fake right there and, you know, great awareness to get around the defender. He took a hard hit but stayed in bounds to keep the clock running. Yep. First and ten from the seventeen. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Lang in the backfield. Fake hand up. Oh, there's uh, procedure, I think. False start. False start. <laughs> yep. You know, things like, like that happen when you got your second team out there because they're not used to being out there at times. And uh, hearing the different snap count from the quarterback causes something like that. You know, I believe that's their seventh uh, false start so far this ball game. Second and 15, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Lang in the backfield. H back, watch out for him. They're going to hand it off to Lang. He gets it out to the 20, down to the about to the 15. He's still going. He's inside the 15. Looks like he's down to about the 14 yard line. Second and a long six. 50 seconds to go in the game. Really, they don't even need to run, but one, maybe two more plays, and this thing's going to be over. Yeah, definitely. They only need to one, run one more play. And Here's a snap. Lang with the ball up the middle. No, quarterback's going to keep it. Runs around the left, right side. He gets tripped Great up. Great open field tackle. Nice job. Like that was number 20. We don't have a number for him. Adrian Yanez. Oh, you have yeah, it? I have it. I have it. 
And that will do it. As your final score will be the Bernie Champion Chargers 55, the Lockhart Lions 23. So the Lions will drop to 3-3 three and three on the year, 1-2 and two in district play. On the other side of things, they'll come up to 3-3 three and three and be 1-2 and one, or one and two in district play as well. Right. So this win has them tied with us. So we're going to take some commercial breaks, come back with your offensive, defensive players of the game, and then wrap the show up. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports and Fight Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Hello Americans, Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at BISD Stadium here in Bernie, Texas, where the Bernie Champion Chargers win 55-23 over your Lockhart Lions. Um, again, it was a game of just not being able to stop their offense and not not always coming through on the offensive end. So it just it's something they're gonna have to learn from. But it doesn't get any easier as Alamo Heights is the next team on the on the docket. Um, again, in volleyball, all the girls won. Uh, they were able to sweep in all three of the girls, freshman, JV, and varsity. And um, I think Emilio's now looking at um, to see what the scores were real quick, though. I'd like to get re give Randy Fry, Rock and Rev, a shout out as our QA tonight. Thank you, sir, for what you do. And uh, right now we're kind of uh, waiting to see what's up on the scores. Yeah, I'm trying to check on my phone, but for some reason it's not pulling up on it. But luckily I, for me, I got another phone, but. You know, this you're listening to the line to the first Lockhart National Bank uh, halftime uh, post game show, and uh, you know, it, tough loss for the Lockhart Lions tonight. You know, they came up and played a very hungry Bernie team who who came into the game 0 and 2 for his district. But you know, as we just seen down there in, the, in midfield, as both teams huddled together after a very tough game, you know, to say final prayers for the night. You know, it is a long drive back to to Lockhart for the Lions, especially after a loss like this. But uh, before we give you the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game and the Farm Bureau Defensive Player of the Game, let me give you one last rundown of the Meitler Storage game break as it is finals at all the district games. Of course, Medina Valley defeated Kennedy High School last night 42-7. to Curveville Tyvee takes care of Uvalde. 56 to 28 and Alamo Heights all over Memorial 42 to 6. So with that, let me give you a rundown for next week's games. It'll be Alamo Heights taking on the Lockhart Lions at Lions Stadium. Kennedy Rockets will be coming here to Bernie ISD Stadium to take on the Champion Chargers. Memorial Minutemen travel to Antler Stadium to take on Tyvee. And Uvalde will travel to Medina Valley to take on the Panthers at Panther Stadium. And uh Scott, next week is going to be another exciting game that, that we're going to come up to. And like I mentioned earlier, Alamo Heights is going to have a chip on their shoulder because the last time they visited Lions Stadium, they walked, they came away with the loss. And 
it turned out to be the loss that kept them out of the playoffs after they had made it for so many years. But for the – I want to hand out the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. You know, it, it's no surprise uh, Daytron Ellison, who recorded another 100-plus yard game today and was pretty much uh, – you know, he he was a driving force for the offense as he was able to score on a 41-yard touchdown run. You know, as difficult as they had it, I see the plays that he had. He had three yards on one carry, 0-0-1, zero, zero, 16, 5, 2, 41, touchdown. And that's one of those things that we had talked about. He goes, the Ellison brothers, they could get one or two yards or lose a yard, but they always got that threat to break down the – you know, to break off for a long yard, long yards and – uh Daytron Ellison is my selection for our Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game. Well, man, that's a good selection. Um, not a lot of offense tonight. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and take the Farm Bureau Defensive Player of the Game, and tonight, you know, there was a couple guys that came to mind, but this one guy is basically the heart and soul of our defense, and I really, truly believe tonight's Defensive Player of the Game has to go to the junior, Eddie Tukar. Eddie Tukar is my pick as the Defensive Player of the Game for tonight. Um, uh, just a lot of tackles, was in on a lot of tackles, whether it be by himself or with other teammates, and that's my vote there. Uh, Tuesday night, where all of us are going to be at uh, Lockhart Gymnasium for the girls' volleyball match against um, um, Dripping Springs, and that's going to be a huge match with first place on the line there. Pre-game is at 6, game time's at 6.30, then we Friday we'll be home against Alamo Heights. So next week we're at home for both Tuesday and Friday. So tune in with us. We will put things on Facebook. Um, I guess you know with that there's not a whole lot to say other than we just move on to the next chapter. Definitely. Um, so again, I want to shout out to Randy Fry of the QA. Thank you very much, sir, for what you do. We sure miss you down here in Texas. Uh, I know it's probably cold where you're at. I want to thank McKelty Altier, the senior uh, producer that does this and makes sure that we're on the air and does a fantastic job with what she does. My sidekick, the Sarge, Emilio Juarez. Ooh. We appreciate you. And myself, Scott Smith, the play-by-play -play guy. We appreciate you listening tonight. And uh, those of you that are listening and heading home, be safe. And we will see you Tuesday night. Thank you for listening and have a great evening.